I'd like to read out um, to all the members and speakers um, here tonight some guidance um, on this meeting. Given the current COVID-19 situation and the spread of the new variant Omicron, I, can I ask attendees at tonight's meeting to follow the additional measures? Please do not share pens or papers or other objects. Additional hand sanitizer is available and positioned around the chamber for your use. All members can help to protect each other by only asking to speak when necessary and reducing the duration of speeches to the minimum. Please wear your mask when leaving the chamber. Please use both exits to leave the chamber. Please avoid congregating in the building and especially near the exits to the chamber. It's important that we closely observe the government guidance as we wish to ensure the safety of all elected members and the public in attendance. And these measures are essential for everyone's safety. This meeting is to be webcast. Members are reminded of the need to activate their microphones before speaking. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and we will be capable of repeated viewings or another use, another use by such other third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it's likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. My name is uh, Councillor Jo Sherbernia. I'm chairing this meeting tonight. Um, and I would um, like to say that I'm going to be a voting chairman. I'd like to welcome all of our councillors tonight and members of the public. And I'd like to introduce Principal Planning Officer, Graeme Courtney, um, and our officers, Vivian Messenger, Laura Kerman. And um, thank you very, very much. Advice to public speakers, uh, and this can be found on pages five to eight. And I have to remind the speakers that you have three minutes uh, to speak. Item three, minutes, uh, members, are we uh, minded to um, agree those minutes from the last meeting? Apologies. Apologies have been received from Councillor Baldwin, Councillor Owen, Councillor Caroline Pond and Councillor Chris Pond. Thank you. Item five, declarations of interest. Councillor Wixson. Or Councillor Jennings. Um, yes, I'd like to declare an interest in item, uh, I don't know what item it is, unfortunately. But it's uh, 19 Stony Path Jones. in Loughton. Uh, basically, um, I am a supporter of the Hills Amenity Society, uh, which is an organisation which has uh, objected to the application. But that is not my view, but I'm just a, a supporter of the society. Thank you for explaining that. Sorry to get your name wrong, Councillor Jennings. Uh, um, I'm Council also, Jennings. yes, also a member of the Hills Amenity Society. Um, which relates to planning application number 11. Thank you. Councillor Murray. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to declare an interest in item 10, planning application EPF stroke 050721, Landon Garages, White Hills Road. A uh, close family friend uh, uh, lives right by the site. Uh, I don't actually consider it to be prejudicial. But I think you do have to think about public perception. So I will withdraw from the meeting and not take part in any discussion or voting. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, item, item one, Brook Parade. I live opposite uh, Brook Parade. So it's not pecuniary, but I did, for completeness, want to raise that. Thank you. Councillor Brooks. I don't know whether you can hear me. Oh, right. Thank you. Um, I'd like, on item 10, um, I have been acquainted with the speaker for a number of years um, because I've lived in and out in a long time. But this, I don't consider this to be prejudicial and I will be taking part in the debate. Thank you. Councillor Heap. Uh, thank you. Uh, I should point out that I was on Buckersfield Parish Council when one of the items was discussed. It's non pecuniary. Thank you. Okay. Any other business? No other business, Chair. Epping Forest. Just a point of detail, Chairman. Um, we uh, members haven't received the copy of the speaker list this evening. So uh, I know you have it, but uh, members haven't seen it. So it, it might be useful to uh, state who the speakers are uh, before each application, just as help. For each application, yes. Epping Forest District. Local plan submission. Um, this is uh, to be noted. Site visits. Do any uh, members wish for a site visit for any of these applications? Shall we say no? So we can go straight to the planning applications. EPF forward stroke 2701 forward stroke 19, 13 to 22 Brook Parade, Chigwell IG7 6PF. There are three speakers on this application, uh, Pritam Patel, an objector, Councillor Selina Jeffcoat for the Parish Council, and also David Anderson, which I believe will be read um, as he's not present at the meeting. Thank you. Um, the officers, Graham Courtney. Yep. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good evening, members. Apologies for not being able to be there in person today. So the first application we have. Yeah, apologies. Uh, so this application uh, relates to the construction of an additional floor on top of a uh, part of Brook Parade in Chigwell. The application has been held in abeyance due to its potential impact on the special area of conservation. However, following adoption of the air pollution mitigation strategy and the agreed mitigation measures, the application can now be brought forward to committee for a decision. Uh, a reconsultation was undertaken in November 2021. Uh, and the application is before members since it is recommended for, appro uh, for approval, apologies, uh, contrary to an objection from the Parish Council uh, and a number of neighbouring residents. The application site is part of the existing three-storey flat roof terrace of Brook Parade, which is situated within the designated shopping centre. To the north of the site is a five-storey block of flats situated on lower land, which in here. Brook Parade itself steps to mirror the slope going south towards the station. Yeah, sorry, steps up toward, <laughs> uh, following the, the slope towards the station. Um, so the proposal only relates to the lower half of the parade, this section here, since the uh, upper part is understood to be in separate ownership. The proposal would add six two-bed units to the site. Each flat would have a private terrace to the front. 
This shows the uh, proposed roof plan. Uh, the new addition would be flat roofed. Not sure what else this particularly shows, this plan. So the proposal would follow the roof line of the existing building with the same descending pattern. It would add a slightly more contemporary element to the building, uh, being stepped back slightly at the front uh, and being clad in zinc. This is similar to other examples within the locality. So this is the street scene. So whilst the, propose, the proposal is only over half of the existing terrace, given that it relates to the lower part, it is not considered that the additional floor is dominant or detrimental to the character or appearance of the area. Whilst no off-street parking is proposed, the site is situated within a designated shopping parade and is close to an underground station. Furthermore, a parking survey uh, has been submitted uh, and assessed by Essex County Councils, who, who have raised no uh, objection to the proposal uh, following initial objection uh, to the scheme. Uh, it was brought to my attention today uh, by um, one of the councillors that, that this, uh, this document actually wasn't available online, um, despite coming in some time ago. Obviously, it, it has been uh, assessed by, the, uh, by Essex County Council, by the experts, uh, and they do consider it to, to be uh, acceptable. They do agree with the findings of the parking survey. The, the survey is now available uh, online. Uh, I ensured that it, it was, uh, was placed on the file earlier today, so it is now available, but, uh, but apologies that that wasn't publicly available uh, before now. So even with the limited regularity of trains, this is a location where policy T1 of the submission version local plan promotes reduced or zero parking provision. Furthermore, the parking survey that was submitted did show that there is capacity within the roads, uh, although I know it is an area of, of great concern in terms of parking, uh, and I very much recall the, uh, the discussions we had uh, for the site just down the road with regards to parking. It should be noted uh, that a scheme for four units has been given prior approval on this site, which is obviously a, a fallback position. So the four units were just these first four. So these, this section technically does have consent to be built. Therefore, in effect, this proposal is, would purely result in an additional two flats on the site, even though the application is for all six. Uh, but but, but in, in effect, it is just the additional two that, that really are being added here. Given all of this, uh, the proposal is recommended for approval, subject to conditions and a legal agreement. Back to you, members. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have three, three speakers on this uh, application. Um, can we hear from Pritin Patel, please? Zoom. Hi, good evening all uh, councillors and staff members. Happy New Year to you all. Um, in re I'm the chair, I'm Finn Patel, chair of Chigwell Residents Association and um, it's been brought to my attention uh, through various neighbours with strong objections for these flats and we as the Chigwell Residents Association committee do strongly object on the following grounds. So, firstly, we think there'd be a massive disruption, uh, not only to the residents, uh, but to the businesses uh, who actually occupy the downstairs premises. Now, we believe that there are water tanks situated on the roof of all of those, or of that parade, if you like, and there would be a massive disruption um, if additional uh, flats were intended to be put forward and constructed, purely for the fact that what would the residents do and what would actually the, the businesses, I mean, you've got barbers there, you've got florists there. So that's one of the objections, if you like. Um, there's also Brook Muse, which is a narrow, a narrow service road um, with, with private garages and forecourts, which leaves no, no real access, it's very small. So it has no access to lorries or actually space for 
storage of building materials. Um, furthermore, I think following the following aspects do need to be considered. Um, there are no fire escapes at present, as far as I'm, I'm aware, um, and nor is there space for fire escapes. So this would put residents at the risk of being trapped in an emergency. Um, there are no lifts at present, nor there is space for lifts. Um, this makes the proposed flats inaccessible for people with limited mobility uh, and does not provide equal access. Um, there's no additional weight, waste bins leading to environmental hazards. Um, you know, you're saying about that the six additional flats will require parking spaces, potentially for 12, 12 cars. There is no space for additional parking provision. I know you mentioned that, Graham, but, you know, people do need to park somewhere. So I think, you know, when you look at how we see it as the committee, you know, this is an overdevelopment of a site that loses the character of Foot Parade, we feel. Um, you know, and, and certainly with the recent development of the Cube and this proposal, further loss of Chigwell Broadway. Um, so that's our take on it, um, and we strongly object. Thank you. Thank you. We have a second speaker, um, Councillor Celine Jeffcoat. Please. Thank you. Firstly, on behalf of Chigwell Parish Council, may I wish all councillors and staff a very happy new year. Another year, another speculative planning application, not in the local plan, that's been held in SAC abeyance for years that is now before you, with a recommendation to approve. We all know there's a huge backlog of applications, but pushing through approvals for poorly thought out and harmful proposals is not how to clear it. Brook Parade is the heart of Chigwell Village. Built over 70 years ago with a narrow slip road for access and parking, it's a row of shops with two floors of flats above, many with garages and gardens. Already flanked by the cliff face that is the unfinished cube, the area is under constant threat of overdevelopment. You rejected the Volvo garage proposal, but it will return. Next month, you'll decide on flats on Cortland Drive, overdevelopment of a single house plot to such an extent that parking can only be delivered via a car lift to the basement. Now we have another six flat on top, top of existing homes in Brook Parade with no parking other than on street. The existing drainage issues are not a planning concern according to planners' advice. Well, as ward councillor, they are my concern and they should be yours. Allegedly, parking's not needed in this location. Yet, with no low consultation, highways want a condition of double yellow lines, while the SAC contribution is due to increased vehicle movements. Chigwell Village, with one bus route and a sporadic shuttle underground service, cannot yet be considered a sustainable transport location. The nearest supermarket is over two miles away. We have no cycle routes whatsoever. Chigwell Village residents looking for a doctor are referred to surgeries in Abridge and Redbridge. We want to cut car journeys, but without viable alternatives, as North um, Essex Parking Partnership recognise, reduced parking will increase on-street congestion rather than reduce car ownership. Brook Parade Freehold was purchased for £15,000 in May 2019. Since then, a series of speculative bids to add floors have rendered the flats unsaleable. Whilst trying to acquire freeholds elsewhere, the applicant has claimed his business model is to, I quote, achieve smaller financial yields over a long time period rather than look for risky short-term gains from development. Really? We've heard there's prior approval for an additional four flats, the, four, the fallback position. Submitted just before Christmas 2020, this was approved by an officer a few weeks later in the face of numerous objections. It came before Parish. We strongly objected. It didn't come here. You, like me, may wonder about democracy and proper progress and why it is implied this evening that this is just another two flats on an already fait accompli planning approval. You may also be wondering, like me, why we've bothered with a local plan if speculators can throw applications at planners for any old site or airspace they've picked up for a song until something sticks. As chair of the parish and on behalf of residents, Please refuse this. This could happen in any of your wards. Don't set a precedent. Don't inflict this damage on homeowners. Don't let an overseas speculator's £15,000 gamble forever blight Chigwell's homes and businesses. Refuse it on the grounds it will increase street parking, if nothing else. But refuse it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Three minutes. We have one more speaker for Brook Parade, uh, David Anderson and um, Laura Kidman is going to read out the statement of uh, officer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, statement on behalf of David Anderson. Uh, firstly, I apologise that we cannot attend this evening in person. We believe the scheme presents an excellent and imaginative opportunity to provide much needed additional housing within the designated local centre of Chigwell, where national planning policy and the council's planning policies encourage uses that will ensure the continued vitality and viability of the area. The application site is situated in a highly sustainable location at the heart of the local centre of Chigwell. It could not be better situated for transport links and the residents will provide support and custom for local businesses. The, propo pro sorry, the proposals provide six relatively small homes of a type that are much needed and rare in the immediate vicinity and will help to diversify the local housing mix. The scheme provides private outside space for each home and there is ample additional green space opposite the green. The proposed design accords well with the adopted policy in terms of scale in relation to recent approved neighbouring development and the use of the contrasting materials and the setback from the existing front facade means that the existing parade will remain visually intact. There are existing permitted development rights for four flats established by prior approval. Thus, it would seem sensible for the committee to follow officer recommendation here and approve the full scheme of six flats, which will visually be a better balance for the parade, which was itself originally built in two halves, 13 to 22 being the second half to be built in the late 50s after numbers 1 to 12 had been completed in the early 50s. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, members, we come to you. So, can uh, I can see uh, Councillor Sunger, who's the Councillor for Bashar. Thank you, Chairman. Can I uh, also um, wish everybody a very happy new year, prosperous one, and let's hope we get out of this COVID pandemic. Um, this falls in my ward, Chigwell Village. Um, Again, like the CRA chair, chairman also, uh, the CRA parish uh, chairman alluded to um, the fact that this is a site. It's an overdevelopment. Um, and Chigwell Village is all about protecting the visual character. Um, and that's what we want to keep um, intact. And this goes against all of that. Um, it's an overdevelopment. It's an intensification of the area. And it's not keeping character with the rest of the, um, the, 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 the area and surroundings. Visitors parking. There are no visitors parking. And I'm going to find it hard to understand how people that come to visit their loved ones that actually do, if, they, if, they, if it goes ahead, how they're going to, where they're going to park. We already have a, a very big, a big issue with parking around there. And I cannot believe that NEP have actually suggested, or the planning officer suggesting that we put double yellow lines. That's going to be a push-pull effect. Because that's not only going to lead cars to park in the, the houses and the roads further down behind uh, Barnaby Way and Dickens Rise. It really doesn't tick a lot of the boxes, in my views, for this planning permission to be granted. Brook Mews is a small road that runs behind this development, and I'm acutely aware of antisocial behaviour that's happened a lot around there, and, and we're already having to deal with people fly-tipping around there as well. This is only going to exacerbate the situation. We've got local shopkeepers there, and COVID has affected many of them. And having more visitors will only mean they'll end up parking along the Brook Parade. This will have a serious impact on the local shopkeepers who are already finding it difficult. Madam Chairman, as the Chigwell Village Councillor, I really, really find it hard how I'm going to support this application. Um, I simply cannot um, support this application. So therefore, um, I will be objecting to this application tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sunger. Councillor Ritter. Thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, just to wish all members and all guests a happy new year as well. Um, so for me, I think a lot has been said already, but the most obvious red flag is parking. I think the recommendation of imposing a double yellow line to the north of Brick Parade is farcical. Uh, it will have a detrimental impact on the existing residents along Brick Parade, but also at Claremont Place. And in reality, as my ward colleague has said, all it will do is encourage further disruption uh, along the back, um, which is Brick Muse, which, as we know, is um, for myself and my ward colleague, it raises significant problems with antisocial behaviour. Um, for those that know the parade, it is the life and soul, it's the heartbeat of our village, it's the epicentre of our village. And that service road... Um, all it takes is for an Amazon or a DPD delivery van to grind the entire service road to a halt. So I think additional six um, two-bedroom units and the, you know, the um, number of additional visitors that would generate, whilst it will be you know, uh, positive for the shopping parade, I think it will be an absolute travesty for the parking situation, which is already a nightmare. Um, the other points that have been quite rightly made against this application involve the limited access for residents or uh, visitors with mobility requirements. I think that needs to be taken very strongly into consideration. Um, alongside the other points about lack of waste storage facilities and the general feel that I get from this application is that it is an over-intensification and it is completely out of keeping with the setting and the feel of our village. So with all of those points in mind, I will also be strongly objecting this application. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Ritzel. Councillor Patel. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just before I speak, can I declare a non-pecuniary interest as the, uh, as the chair of the Chigwell uh, Residents Association is known to me, but it's a non-pecuniary non interest. Um, essentially, I'm not, not wishing to, uh, to go over the points already made, I've got, I've, uh, my I have two areas of concern. Um, the, the Chair of the Parish Council has mentioned around uh, the sustainability point that, that's been made. Um, I'd be quite interested to understand the definition of sustainability uh, when considering this uh, development in, in, its, in its setting. Um, I think this is, gonna, this is a really key point to this application. Um, the, the Chigwell station uh, is, on a, is on the loop and, and thus has very limited service um, and the bus, uh, the, bus uh, the transport system, the 167 bus, um, it's quite intermittent as well um, and it's, it's not a regular flow. The, the points being made about two other developments that are likely to come back to this committee and obviously they are separate planning applications however um, they should be in, um, we should be mindful of them as well when considering sustainability for, the lo um, uh, for this location. Um, the other point I had was around the precedent setting because essentially you have a, a proposal here for six um, but what if the, the person who owns the, 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 the continuation of the parade then comes in for another application, citing pres um, a precedent set uh, on this application that's already been potentially granted? Then you've got double the number and then double the issues. The access through Brook Parade is, is narrow. Um, parking, parking a car in there when you have a car on the opposite side uh, can, it can, can be very tricky to navigate. Um, I don't think, I mean, ordinarily uh, a development like this in, in, in other locations may be acceptable, but in this, in this location I don't think it is acceptable and I won't be supp um, supporting it. Thank you. Councillor Patel. Councillor Barnett, please. Um, thank you. Uh, firstly, thank you to all the speakers um, and may I just put on record my congratulations to the new chair of Chigwell Residents Association. Um, I have a quick question and then two points if I may. Um, to Graham Courtney. Um, my reading tells me that there are permitted development rights available to, to uh, developments up in the roof space. Can I just confirm, and I'm sorry if this is a really basic question, how does that relate to this application? It, do, is there, are, are there permitted development rights in relation to this before I put forward by my comments? Uh, yep, that's no problem. Uh, yes, there, there are permitted development rights and there is a prior approval on this site. Uh, what I might just quickly do, because I did prepare this earlier, um, this is what the prior approval has, um, has given 
consent four. So these are the four flats, as you can see, they are very similar. Uh, well, they're identical to uh, the two thirds of what's being proposed now. Uh, obviously what is now being proposed is extending that uh, across across this part of the parade here. But but the, these, these four flats uh, have been given consent under prior approval. Uh, that is a, a viable fallback, that is, that is a permit development right. Uh, the, scope of what uh, plan officers can, can, can look at as part of the prior approval process uh, is very narrow uh, and actually seems to be getting narrower as uh, various appeal decisions and court cases uh, come out. Um, so so it is, it is, we are very, very restricted in, what, in, in terms of what we can look at uh, as opposed to obviously what we're assessing here as a planning application. Uh, so, that, so that's kind of the reasoning uh, okay. why the prior approval was given because uh, it did, it, tick all the boxes, as it were. Uh, there was a previous application, actually, or a previous prior approval for six flats, uh, which wasn't lawful because of the height of it. Uh, it fell foul of the, of the rules. Um, but the, these four actually did, uh, did meet the, the, the permitted development requirements. Um, so, so yes, that is a, a viable fallback that they have there. Uh, but as I say, the assessment for the prior approval is far narrower than what you are assessing now as part of this planning application. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, I object uh, on the basis of um, the National Planning uh, Policy Framework, paragraph 120E. Um, uh, and what that says is, whilst it on one hand it encourages uh, developments in airspace, uh, it is conditional upon uh, maintaining safe access and egress for occupiers. Um, based on the comments that have been raised um, today, uh, for example, lift access, parking, uh, being able to actually get a car through Brook Parade at present is proving to be very difficult. At the best of times, you have about three million pounds worth of cars parked on a very, very, very narrow road. And I can, can't even begin to imagine uh, how much more difficult that will be in relation to this. So in my view, I don't believe it meets 120E because I don't think there is a maintenance of safe access or egress for occupiers. Um, and it's for that basis I'll be objecting to this application. Thank you. Councillor Heap, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, Councillor Barnott's uh, already raised some of the points. Uh, it is a puzzle that we're looking at an application that's older than the one that got prior approval. And had the one that's got prior approval come here, all the objections would still be valid because this is just a small addition to something that's already got prior approval. So. Uh, I'm puzzled by that process, to be honest. Uh, I know you've explained it, that that was uh, a tighter brief that you had, but um, I can't approve this at all. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lyon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think this application says more about what it doesn't say than what it does say. Um, it hasn't really emphasised the fact that this is partial development of Brook Parade, so there's a, another half that is going to be undeveloped. Um, and that is, makes for a very unbalanced situation. Uh, one of the sort of key points was that Essex Council did not refuse. They refused on the first uh, application, but then changed their opinion based on a robust traffic survey. Um, I today checked with a number of people, uh, including Councillor Williamson and the planning officer, where was that survey? Uh, it wasn't included with the planning information. Uh, it has now been added to the website, but only later on this afternoon. So nobody's had a chance to read it. Um, and it talks ab about uh, no parking. Uh, I know Councillor Sunga mentioned visitor parking, but there's absolutely no parking. So anybody that has a car of what, any of these 12, well, six flats, which probably are going to amount to 12 cars plus any visitors parking, are going to have to be displaced parking on the roads. And the survey actually refers to parking in Brook Parade, Brook Mews, Station Road, Brook Way, Barnaby Way. So they're actually looking to actually park everywhere they can on a, a existing roads where there is considerable stress. Now, this is just one of a number of developments that's going to become before us. And it's been mentioned that the Volvo garage is one. And yet we don't look at the whole and the impact of all of the parking of developments associated with this particular area. So we've got the Cube, which is now carrying on development. We've got uh, the Volvo garage, this one, 
Um, there was an application for a, um, a development of flats across the road, uh, which was rejected, where a house was going to be converted. So there's a huge amount of uh, potential for parking stress and also traffic congestion. This is a, a crossroads uh, in Chigwell. And again, if we look at the transport, yes, there is an underground station, but most of that is east flowing. If you want to uh, go, sorry, west flowing, if you want to go east, then you have to go round to Woodford. So again, that is not a sustainable opportunity. The buses are extremely limited. So as an example, if you wanted to travel to the shopping park in uh, Langston Road, how would you get there by bus? You can't. Um, if you wanted to go, uh, and I think it's been mentioned by uh, GP surgeries, if you want to get to a GP surgery, uh, and there are none in Chigwell, how would you get there by public transport? You can't. So there is not an opportunity for public transport to mitigate um, the actual issues of car ownership. And whilst I'm a supporter of the local plan, and we are intending to reduce the amount of cars and pr obviously provide efficient cars in terms of electric cars. Um, that is not going to happen here. Uh, there, there may be an, a, a reduction in car parking, but that doesn't mean to say that owners will reduce their car usage or, in fact, reduce their cars. So I, again, would put a proposal for rejection of this application on overdevelopment, insufficient parking, um, and obviously impact on the local area. So I don't know whether that is an acceptable proposal for rejection, but I'm happy to put that forward. Thank you. Just uh, one point, um, Graham Courtney, the absence of the, um, the study, the parking analysis has not been included in the information today uh, at this meeting. Um, can we circulate that? Uh, well, that's, that, that is now online. It was, uh, as I say, it was actually Councillor Lyon who brought that to my attention uh, just today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that was... Uh, I can't explain why that wasn't um, put in on the, on, on the, web, um, on the uh, website uh, uh, made available. There was no reason it, it, it shouldn't have been. I think it was just purely overlooked uh, at the time when, when, so it, when it came in. could you just tell us the summary I mean, of it? But what was the summary of the summary of the, stu the study? Well, the study showed that the, that um, that there there isn't significant parking stress in the area. I think, as as um, mm. a lot of the councillors pointed out, this uh, this the study was uh, relating to uh, several surrounding roads. Uh, so it, it certainly seems to be suggesting that there will be displaced uh, parking, um, and, and and the suggestion is that that there is capacity within those surrounding roads for the additional vehicles. Um, that, that seems to be what the suggestion is, and that's been supported by Essex County Council uh, as, a, as a purely sort of technical, technical note. Um, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I can say too much more than that. I mean, it is a technical note. Uh, it is available now, um, but, it, but it essentially says that, that, that there is capacity within the surrounding roads. Uh, can I just take this point from the councillor? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, there, there's, there's one other point here. The um, reference by Essex County Council looks at Brook Mews. It doesn't in any way look at Brook Parade and the impact on Brook Parade. Now, Brook Parade is, is a very important shopping parade with a number of very vibrant shops. Uh, and I think if, if you start talking about residential parking on there, that really is going to sterilise the parking for anybody wanting to use the shops, and that's going to be a great um, resentment by the shopkeepers. Uh, so I think there's, there's significant issues here. The parking survey, I don't believe, is robust. I don't believe it actually uh, improves the situation. And whilst it actually uh, addresses some of the issues, it, it's assuming that nobody else is parking anywhere. And at the moment, um, I think the survey was done in 2020, but at the moment, with COVID, obviously, there's less parking, but that's going to change. And I know from driving around there on a regular basis, parking is a considerable problem. So that, that's, that's where I, I believe that's it. I'm just it's going to take one more very quick um, point from Councillor Simon. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman, for allowing me to come back. Um, Chairman, if we're not seeing the whole application in its entirety, and 
we've not had the opportunity to see the consultation. Is this a valid application just for the legals to, to advise us on? Thank you. Um, I'm happy to come in here. Uh, yes, it would be. I mean, the uh, the additional parking survey that's that's come in was in response to the objection from Essex County Council. Uh, it is a technical uh, technical document. It's been sent to Essex County Council, uh, who obviously are uh, the Highways Authority. They are they have assessed it. Um, yes, it certainly would have been good practice uh, and preferable for that to be publicly available because particularly. As we know, uh, one of the big concerns around here is, is parking, so I think it would have been useful for that to be available. I think uh, legally, I, I, I don't think there's any particular issue uh, in terms of determining the application today. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel that we would need to defer it uh, to enable anybody to look at that. I'm not convinced it's going to change anybody's minds, in all honesty, um, but, but it, it, it has served its purpose as it, as it has you know, in terms of it's been sent to the experts who have who have assessed it uh, and now responded. Right. Okay. Um, I'm now going to take this application. Sorry. You want to come back? Yes, please, Chairman. Sorry, yeah, I did. Quick, uh, I did ask a couple of. I'd, do you, uh, Shall we take yours? now um, in fear of going over all of my um, fellow councillors I'm also a councillor of Chigwell as well um, the parking survey um, the fact that it wasn't available was a little bit of concern and as my fellow councillors have already said there's big assumptions um, about the parking around that area um, again the fact that you know the other developments that have come forward have not been taken into consideration um, I feel like it's a bit like people have just put a, a blindfold on and turned around and uh, tried to put a pin like on, the, on a donkey. Oh, where should we start building now? And it just seems to be in that corner without any consideration, without any consultation. Um, and I think this is time for it to actually, we, we need to put a stop to this. Um, Brook, Par you know, Brook Parade, as um, Councillor Lyon has said, hasn't really um, been taking the mention to this. And that really is, is the hub of the Chigwell village. Um, I think making these assumptions when there's a lot of people that, you know, if, if they looked at trends with the parking in Chigwell, you will see that in Dickens Rise and on the corners, people are parking because even though we are on a loop, um, you know, people are actually driving into Chigwell to, to actually use the station. So they're just parking everywhere. We don't have a car park in Chigwell. So it's just a kind of hit and miss. And it stops everybody else that's living around the area to, to go about their business and to come to those shops to, to be able to park. People in Dickens Rise and Brook Mews and that, you know, they're, they're not happy. If you see the road behind that, where people are actually having a, a cut through, the road is, is actually appalling there because of that. So I'd like to just take into, consider, take into consider everything that my fellow councillors have said today that I will... Um, not be um, agreeing to this at all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very quickly. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. Sorry, I did ask, uh, when I spoke, I did make a couple of points and um, I didn't get a response to the points that I made. I thought when um, the officer spoke that that would be picked up. But um, it, about this being a sustainable location and the definition that's being used to determine that this is a, um, that this is a sustainable um, uh, location. And secondly, about the precedent setting. Um, can we have a comment, please, on, on whether uh, granting a uh, permission to this would, would yeah. set a precedent for the remainder of the parade? So that's quite an important point. Um, mm -hmm. Graham Courtney, could you... Yeah, no, no, happy to, happy to come back. Um, I was going to come back on that, but it, 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 it didn't seem that there was the opportunity, so uh, apologies for that. Uh, in terms of the... Sus I mean, obviously, sustainability covers a, a far um, broader area than just... Um, just location, but obviously I think here we're talking about sustainable location. Uh, and in terms of the sustainable, the definition of sustainable location, the obviously the um, submission version, local plan, does talk about within 400 metres of a railway station. Uh, that's where, you know, it states that the council will seek to for reduced car parking, in, including car-free uh, development. I think certainly, um, you know, it, that's a very broad brush approach uh, obviously I 
was very involved with yourselves uh, on the Volvo Garage uh, application where this was uh, a, a significant part of the discussion. Obviously, it's uh, a, a large matter here. Uh, and I think the, it does seem that the, the broad brush um, definition in the local plan of 400 metres of a railway station possibly is uh, slightly too broad brush and needs to be sort of narrowed down slightly uh, and, and fine-tuned. Uh, and I think it may be worth... Um, myself having a discussion with our policy section about that um, because it certainly seems from members and residents that uh, the, the, the pure distance to a railway station isn't, isn't necessarily sufficient to say it's a sustainable location um, and obviously we, we, we certainly give a great weight to uh, the opinion of, of, of members um, but that is at the moment the definition and that is one of the main reasons obviously this is being supported by officers despite the lack of parking um, because of the fact that it is within 400 metres of a railway station and therefore meets that, that definition. Um, but as I say, I think we do need to to drill down into that a little bit more um, now that the uh, local plan is advancing. Um, in terms of precedent, I think undoubtedly this would set a precedent. I think if we allowed six flats on this site, um, undoubtedly there would be an application for another probably six flats, uh, if not, yeah, probably six flats on, on the, uh, the neighbouring site. Um, so I, I, I do think this would set a precedent. Uh, I know this isn't <laughs> necessarily uh, pushing the, the officer's recommendation, but, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I would imagine this would, this, uh, a, a similar application would follow on the uh, upper part of the, uh, the, the parade if this were approved. Members, is that, does that answer your question? So I'm going to take this uh, application to the vote, please. Laura. <clears throat> Members, for the uh, officer's recommendation to grant permission. Officers again. Abstentions. We now need to seek reasons for refusal. So that application has been refused. We need to um, seek reasons for refusal for that. So can we um, note reasons for refusal, please? Can a member make a proposal for Chem, I, I did propose that we uh, reviews the application on the basis of overdevelopment, uh, insufficient parking um, associated with the development, uh, and, and increased parking stress in the area. Um, I'm not sure whether that's robust enough, but that's a starting point. Intensification of? Over, uh, you, did, you did say overdevelopment. Yes. Does, do you want to add that? Intensification, or is this one and the same thing? Yeah. Right, is someone going to second that? Yeah, well, the precedent, oh, excuse, with, excuse sorry, me. precedent in terms of uh, this being established as a precedent for other associated developments alongside. Yes, come, uh, I think that's yeah, been mentioned a few that's, times, it's yeah, an important that's point, important. so we can, we can add uh, that. And also uh, how to consider this um, with the other applications uh, that pending applications in Jigwell for developments which are likely to increase the, do, the do pressure. Just apologies, just before yes, we go to the I, vote. I, I, um, want to, I want to check oh. with the officer to see if these are valid reasons. Yeah, no, these, are, these are absolutely fine. Um, the only thing I was going to suggest as well is obviously uh, this is uh, an application that will have an impact on the uh, SAC um, and obviously without a, a signed legal agreement we would have our standards um, SAC reason for refusal, uh, if members are, are happy for us to also add, add yes, that on. Yeah. Yes, are we happy with that? So, uh, so this um, motion has been seconded. So, oh, Councillor Rixey. Yeah, if, if I can just add, well, there's quite a few questions I didn't have to ask, but I'd just like to draw attention to one thing. Um, and see whether uh, fellow councillors agree with this, if it should be added to the reason for refusal. 
But uh, there's been a lot of talk about the site being sustainable. In fact, the report itself only describes it as a fairly sustainable site. Uh, so I, I, think, I think that says it all, really, because we've moved down one stage, and I think we can go down a stage further and say that it isn't sustainable. And uh, the words where it says it's fairly sustainable are actually on page 20, uh, and the second paragraph down, under principle of development, and, and the last sentence, which says it's only a fairly sustainable site. So, uh, to me, it's, it's not really sustainable at all, but uh, I, I, I'm... Uh, well, it's an interpretation that could be, you know, uh, fair. Well, well I, I leave it up to uh, Councillor Lyon, uh, who's, I think, okay. proposed yes, a reason for refusal, for that, if, he, if he wishes to add that. Yeah. Point. Good point. No, I'm going to really, I'm going to take this to the vote. Uh, Laura, thank you. Um, for refusal, as per the conditions forwarded and for second. For, sorry, for refusal, sorry. Yeah. Against and abs abstentions. The uh, applications refused. Do you have uh, a way forward? <laughs> no. Right. Let's get a move on. Uh, application number EPF forward stroke 0507. Chairman, I assume someone will get me for the next item. Pardon? I'm leaving as I declare a prejudicial interest. Oh, yes. Thank you, Councillor Murray. So, EPF forward slash 0507 forward slash 21 land and garages, White Hill Road, Loughton, Essex, IG 10, 1 TS. There is one speaker on this application who is an objector, Karen Minstead, who is in the chamber, I believe. So, Karen Minstead. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Can I start? Right. start. Sorry. Um, good evening and happy oh, New Year sorry. to you all. The, uh, sorry, I need to do my presentation first. Oh, sorry, okay. before we get to speakers. It good, comes I'm after keen. after after okay. the presentation. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, sorry, are we ready? Are we okay to go? Okay. Uh, so this application is for the demolition of 27 disused garages and the erection of two two-bed bungalows with five parking spaces. Uh, the application is before committee as it has uh, received objections from the town council along with five residents the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Now, the site is situated to the rear of dwellings on White Hills Road and Church Lane. Uh, Oakview School bounds the site uh, to the southeast. Yeah. The site is accessed uh, by way of a 30 metre long single width road from White Hills Road. Is it here? The proposal is to demolish all the existing garages and replace these with a pair of semi-detached bungalows. The new dwellings would each be two-bed properties. Since this is part of the council house building programme, the new dwellings are intended to be affordable housing. However, there is no policy requirement for this. The new dwellings would utilise the existing access Whilst concerns have been raised by neighbours regarding the suitability of the access, there is no objection from Essex County Council Highways. There would be five parking spaces to serve the development, which is more than sufficient, uh, and a refuse storage collection point is proposed towards the front of the access road. 
Uh, the application is largely the same as uh, an application that was previously approved in 2016. Uh, however, that has now lapsed, uh, was never, never built out. Uh, as such, the application is again recommended for approval subject to conditions. Back to you, members. Thank you. Karen Minster. Good evening and Happy New Year to you all. Um, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of myself and other residents who submitted objections to this planning application in July 2021. May I remind the committee members of all the work, time, thought and finances that have gone into our objections over the years. These applications began prior to 2015 for us and, for, and I for one have had it hanging over me for eight years of the 25 years I've lived in my home. Ironically, this application and meeting has been put on us at such short notice once again. In fact, the first letter was received by a resident last Wednesday, the 29th of December, allowing us only four working days to prepare for this evening. We trust there have been no changes to the original application as we were unable to access the planning application and associated documentation until Monday of this week. A point of information, it is essential numbers 70 and 72 Church Lane have it confirmed in writing to reinstate back access which had been taken from them without their consent and it is not shown on your drawings. Whilst we have no objections to the current application for two bungalows, we would strongly object to consenting for any further applications for additional housing, units, extensions, etc. to the approved scheme on the subject site, either by the current owners or any successors in title. We are all very aware of this common practice by developers, house owners, of adopting additional applications to eventually achieve larger schemes. And in view of this, we would ask the committee members if they can make this a condition of the planning consent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Members, uh, Councillor Jennings. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'll be brief. Um, I think, on balance, um, this is a, a good use of Brownfield site. It's um, sustainable. The, the two bungalows are, are the type of housing that we're losing rapidly in the area, and we could do with more bungalows. It's, um, it, it's also... Uh, relating to the green aspect of it, that's also a good, good thing. My only concern with this, and I do like the proposal very much, I think it's, as I say, as I said before, good use of um, a brownfield site and, and a reasonable use, it's not overdeveloped. But I'm concerned about this issue of the, ac the back access to 70 and 72. Uh, we're not shown, or I, was, I couldn't see quite clearly on those plans whether they have uh, an access which they've they've had for several years now many years and I think they would have a right of way I know it's not a planning application but I would like to see where that access is supposed to be and whether it will be retained for those residents can you show us that please uh, I'm just going to have a quick look uh, I mean it, it, it the the uh, the objectors correct it's not shown on this plan uh, I mean it it isn't strictly a uh, a consideration here I mean it's a any right of access that that any neighbours may have uh, is is a matter for the developer uh, to uh, to deal with and address and obviously if uh, they wish to build a development that doesn't allow for that right of access then it may be that they can't build that development. Um, uh, as I know, this is a slight, slightly different issue because it is the council uh, building this, but it, it is no different from any other developer. Uh, if, there, if, if a neighbour does have a right of access and that can't be provided for as part of this development, then they would have to, uh, you know, the, uh, 
the developer, the applicant would have to come back with a revised scheme to uh, to show that as uh, that that uh, that access. But uh, it's not strictly a a material planning consideration here um, because it is the land is all in the ownership of the applicant, uh, and as I say, the, the any sort of legal right of way uh, would be a, a separate matter they'd have to deal with. I'm just checking. So, what were the numbers that? Uh, was it 70 and 72, did you say? Is that, is that correct? Which I believe are these two properties here. Um, so as you can see, there's certainly no access shown on here. Uh, and I think it'd be very difficult to... Well, it wouldn't... It would potentially be possible to provide an access uh, down the side here. Uh, it's not uncommon to have a, a shared access to, to gardens, um, but it, it doesn't appear that that is being proposed. Uh, as part of this application, but, but I'm, I'm not convinced that we could refuse permission on those grounds. Uh, but it may, it may be that it would stop the development, uh, regardless, depending on the uh, on the legal right of right of access that they have. Thank you. Um, is that right? Yes, Councillor Corkman. Thank you. Just by way of explanation, the two. Houses that have been referred to have had a right of vehicular access for more than 20 years. One of the owners is disabled and they had a need to, because the front garden is stepped and raised and they had access to their house via a gateway that was accessed through this land. And that's why the speaker has raised this point because it's a material point for the elderly person who lives in the house who's had the gate blocked for two years by the council. So I think we're, we... We sh it cannot stand in the way of this application, but it's, it should be noted on record that this person is entitled to their right of way. So I understand it's not a planning issue, but that scheme can't be built unless they allow the vehicular access to this uh, person. Um, I don't overly object to the scheme. I think I would object if anything larger came forward. I can only judge what we have before us. What we have before us is the most that this site, I think, can take. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Councillor. Could I ask a couple of questions, please, Mr. Chair? Mr. Brooks, yes, please. Uh, of Mr. Courtney. Just um, a couple of things, really. Could he highlight any small differences that have been made in this planning application, and was there any particular reason why it was allowed to lapse and we didn't build on it before now? Uh, well, in terms, of, I've actually got the um, the original plans here. My apologies. <laughs> Just now, when I was referring to the neighbours, I thought I was sharing my screen, but I wasn't. So I was uh, pointing to something that I'm, I've just realised that members couldn't see. So apologies for that. Um, oh, I'm going to share my screen now. So this is the uh, previous uh, approval. Uh, as you can see, it's it's fairly similar to what. Um, has been proposed. Apologies, I can't share both of my screens. Um, but it is looking, I've got both open in front of me. Um, and the only real differences I can see here are the, um, the external materials seem to have differed slightly. The layout appears identical uh, doesn't appear that there's any change to the to the layout uh, of the, the internal layout of the houses um, and actually the external layout again appears largely unchanged so I it, it looks like it's 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 predominantly a, a change to the materials uh, some very minor changes from from what was approved in in 2016. In terms of why they didn't build it, I, I couldn't answer that. Um, so I should stop sharing um, with any with any certainty. I mean, that's more a question for our our or my colleagues in in housing. Uh, there are a number of these. I'm sure members re recall a number of these applications coming forward. Um, we they, they've come forward in um, in stages uh, or phases, uh, and, it, and it does appear that uh, for whatever reason there were a number of these that that have lapsed. Uh, you. I think some have come back uh, to members, some have been dropped, some uh, will probably be coming back in the future, um, but I don't know why they haven't been built out uh, when 
previously um, consent has been have been given, uh, that would be a question for, for our, our housing department, unfortunately. Thank you. I seem to remember we had a long discussion about putting down a condition that um, no dormer windows were to be allowed um, or a sub they couldn't build a, a first floor um, on those bungalows. Does anyone else remember that? Yeah, yeah. No permitted. That's right. No permitted development. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Heath. Uh, thank you. Yes, Councillor Kaufman uh, raised the point. Uh, we had a similar situation in Buckstill where garage sites were being built on, and two residents lost their right of uh, access to the back garden and uh, it translated into money, effectively. Uh, so that possibly should be considered here, although it's slightly more complicated because of the disability. Uh, in terms of the design, it only looks like it's got four solar panels on, so that doesn't look like it's gonna support an electric boiler. Is that uh, a thing? Is it going for a gas boiler in this? Do we know? Should we have more? I think yes. Right. Councillor Bixley. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I've got uh, one or two questions for Mr. Courtney. Uh, the first one is Condition 11, which I'm quite interested in, which refers to a scheme to enhance the ecological value of the site. I just wondered how that was going to be achieved, because uh, I think it's quite an important issue if it can be achieved. Um, another thing which has caught my eye um, is Condition 19, which refers to no unbound material shall be used in the surface treatment of vehicular access within six metres of the highway boundary. Does that imply that part of that access would be unbound uh, material? Because, as I understand it, the, um, the um, wheelie bins are going to be stored at the entrance and uh, it wouldn't be very good if you got to wheel wheelie bins over unbound material. I just That's a, another point I'd like queried, uh, answered, and um, <clears throat> I think I did have some other points, but um, per perhaps they're not so relevant. Um, I've got some sympathy with the resident from Elmore's who um, apparently uh, is seeking a replacement uh, wall. Um, I don't know if um, Mr uh, Courtney could answer that one, that's on page 33. The third paragraph down. But uh, yeah, th they're my sort of three points I'd like answered if possible. Uh, yes, no problem. Yeah. Um, the In terms of ecological enhancements, I mean, obviously that's uh, a fairly standard condition that we ask for on, on, on all uh, central new, new residential developments, but, uh, uh, but, but most new developments uh, completely. It's obviously part of the, the, again, part of the new local plan. Um, Usually, well, it can vary depending on, on the site. It, it largely uh, relates to what the existing ecological value of the site is. Obviously, the higher the existing ecological value, the, uh, the higher the, uh, the enhancement would have to be. Um, but it can range from anything from um, the plant species, the amount of uh, green space, uh, bat boxes, bird boxes, um, things like this. Uh, there's there's, there's a, quite a raft of, uh, of ways to uh, enhance the site, um, and, and that's what that condition requires. Um, obviously, we do now get uh, details in for these fairly regularly. Um, so, as I say, there are various methods um, to to enhance the site. Uh, in terms of unbound material, that's a fairly standard condition from Essex County Council. Obviously, they don't want um, loose gravel going out onto the uh, onto the highway. Uh, I cannot imagine there will be any loose gravel on this site. Um, and actually, we do have uh, another condition about uh, approving the hard and soft landscaping, and that would include the surface material of the of the roadway. Uh, I don't imagine we would want to see uh, any sort of uh, loose gravel on, on, on any part of that, um, certainly any part of the access road. Um, but yeah, that's a fairly standard condition from Essex, as I say, because they, uh, they don't want loose gravel on the road because it, it, it causes quite a problem. Um, the question about Elmore's, I'm just sort of having a quick look, sorry, trying to find that. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what the reference to Elmore's is there. Apologies. Um, can, can I come in there? It's on yeah, page, sure. page 33. Yeah, no, well, unfortunately, I, I don't have a, a physical uh, agenda, <laughs> so I don't have the same page numbers as, as oh, you right. have. Um, okay. But that's not a problem. Um, yeah. I've, I've found the reference. I'm just trying to work out what it's, what it's suggesting. Um, I mean, it's, well, it involves the, the maintenance of a group of cypress trees as well. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I can answer your question about the Elmore's um, issue at the minute, unfortunately. Okay. Um. Um, and, but just quickly, why I'm, I'm on here, just um, because uh, I think it was Councillor Jennings did, did raise the issue about the, uh, the previous conditions, and I just wanted to... Uh, highlight that there is a suggested condition, again, restricting any uh, extensions into the roof. And that includes the new um, class AA, uh, which allows for extensions uh, or for additional floors. Um, so that would obviously stop uh, an additional floor being put on either of these properties and turn them into two storey houses, as well as the standard um, roof dormers, Velux windows, things like that. So that is another suggestion, condition number 20. Um, that's that suggested condition. Thank you. Just going to take to uh, Councillor Brooks. Could you be? Uh, Th that, that's uh, uh, Mr. Courtney's answered the question okay, about thank the you. permitted development. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Jennings, could we make this speedy? Um, right. Just going back to the issue of the um, the um, the two exits uh, behind 1772. When I looked at the plans, um, which were very late coming on, as somebody pointed out, but we only had them yesterday available to us to look at. But on one of the plans, I thought, it wasn't very clear, but I thought two um, access to the back gardens were shown. Could you just check that? It was on a, a ground plan and on the site, it looked to me as if they were two possible um, ac access for these two houses. Hey, that's not a problem. I will just check that now uh, and come back to you on that. So I don't know if you want to continue if there's other questions. No, uh, I think we've I come to the this. end of questions. Okay. And um, I couldn't hear any conditions, so we can go to the, the vote on it. Actually, sorry, apologies. Before we go to the vote thing, uh, I have found uh, what um, Councillor Brooks was referring... No, sorry, I'm kidding. Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings. <laughs> I, mixed, I mixed them up earlier, and that's why I'm... Uh, mix them up again. So let me just share this screen. Um, so what we have here, which unfortunately wasn't, I don't think was in the presentation annoyingly. Um, so this looks like it is uh, the plan that, that she's referring to. And I'm just going to zoom in um, so we can see here. So actually, uh, it does appear that, uh, that what I was referring to earlier, um, it may be the situation that they're looking at doing, because we've got here existing gate to be retained, which appears that it's going into 70, well, uh, probably both, that probably leads to both properties. Um, this would obviously be a new gate into the uh, new garden of this property, and this would be a secure gate uh, here. So, so in effect, this walkway would be shared, uh, be a shared access for unit two uh, and these two properties here. So actually, uh, my apologies, uh, I didn't pick that up. Uh, earlier, um, but it does appear that that has that issue has been addressed, um, and they are, and the proposal is retaining to to to, to keep those uh, access uh, points. Obviously, they're not vehicular access; um, it is only pedestrian access. But mm -hmm. but there is access nonetheless. Well, if we vote for this, I would like a condition uh, that there's no further building on top, as Councillor Brooks mentioned no no further building um 
on the top of these or, or to the side or no, no extra building and also that these two gates are retained so that people do have access. So oh, I'm, I'm still amused. Uh, there, there is, as, as, as I said, there is actually condition, condition 20 um, does restrict, uh, well, it says, it actually specifies roof enlargements or general, um, no roof enlargement, I'm going to have a look at the wording of that because it, it, it doesn't seem to quite make sense, but um, it does refer to class A, uh, which is general extensions, AA, which is new, uh, new stories, B and C, which are extensions in the roof. So actually, it is proposing uh, that all of those permitted development rights be removed, so, so there'd be very little uh, that they could do without planning permission. Uh, but as I say, I may, I may just have to change the wording of that slightly because it doesn't quite make sense when you read it. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick look, see whether there is anything in there about those gates, but I don't see why we couldn't add that as a condition um, if it's not already in there. So would you be happy with that? Would you like to just restate that condition, Councillor Jones? Um, yes, that the two gates um, that are accessed to, to that land from the back of the gardens of 1772, the two gates are retained. And I'd like that to be part of our uh, approval. And that's or, reasonable, yeah. um, Graham? Yeah, that's no, no, absolutely no problem, uh, as can, I said. Can I, I ask for a seconder, then, on that uh, condition uh, stated? Councillor Corfman. And it's appropriate. Would you like to, be, to debate that condition, anybody, or shall we just go to the vote? Go, got, we've got a seconder, and we'll take that forward. And um, with that condition, we can now go to the vote. Okay, so. Um in line with the officer's recommendation, those four granted permission with the additional condition. Uh, against and abstentions. The permission is granted with the additional condition. So that application has been agreed. Application number EPF forward slash 2033 forward slash 221, 17 Stony Path, Loughton, IG10, I1SJ. And we have a speaker uh, on Zoom, Michael Fisher. Thank you, Chairman. This application is for extensions to the roof, including front, side and rear dormers at 17 Stony Path. The application is before members, as there is an objection from the Town Council, the Hills Amenity Society and one neighbour. The application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. The application site is a detached dwelling located close to the Baldwin's Hill conservation area, although not within it. The property sits on a hill uh, and is similar in appearance to its neighbours, although the run of houses are not quite identical. The dwelling benefits from what appears to be a large single storey rear addition. It also has a flat roof, two storey side projection. The existing property is a four bed dwelling at present. The proposal would not alter the ground or first floor of the existing dwelling. However, it would add a fifth bedroom and a further bathroom to the roof area. This shows the existing dwelling, including its large flat roofed side projection. There are two small dormers at first floor level within the existing cat slide roof. The proposed roof addition would extend across the flat roof side projection 
continue in the existing line. Uh, an additional small front dormer uh, would be added uh, to the front, uh, along with a dormer to the side to accommodate the stairs. A slightly larger, more contemporary dormer would also be added to the rear. This application follows two previously refused schemes, which are shown here. The two previous schemes sought to increase the height of the roof and added far more bulk and mass than this proposal. Both the previous approval, uh, previ sorry, both the previous applications, apologies, uh, were refused on design grounds. This latest uh, revision is considered more acceptable. The reduction in bulk and retention of both the existing ridge height and the front gable have, have in officer's opinion, overcome the previous concerns. It should be noted that the submitted plans, as shown here, do include an outline of what was approved on the neighbouring site, which is similar to this proposal. However, this permission was granted in 2007 and has never been implemented and has now lapsed. Nonetheless, the proposal as it now stands is considered to be acceptable in design and character and would not be detrimental to the amenities of the neighbours. As such, it is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Back to you, members. Thank you. Uh, two speakers on this application, Michael Fisher via Zoom, uh, one object as an objector, and the applicant, Lee Giorgio, who's in the room. Right. I've got the Zoom on. Michael Fisher. Michael, you have three minutes. Uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, wish everybody a Happy New Year. Um, this is on behalf of my mother, Wendy Fisher. I would like to register my objection to the planning application for 17 Stony Path for Outen. I live to the left of Mr. George Yu at 19 Stony Path and have done so for 51 years. I would like firstly to note the steep gradient of Stony Path. Any building work that is carried out adjacent to the lower neighbour on the left, which we are, can be overbearing as it is prone to tower over the neighbour below. Any alteration to the right has far less impact for this reason. This steep gradient will also mean that the street scene as you walk up Stony Path will be adversely affected. 17 Stony Path has already had two major extensions carried out, one by Mr. Giorgio and the other by a previous owner. This latest application will be overbearing on this small quiet road, which overlooks ancient allotments, Loudon Potato Ground, which are part of our designated conservation area. The new proposed roof line will be out of kilter with the others in this row of seven houses and the Villat windows to the front dormer will also be out of character. The new proposed third floor left side dormer will loom over our house, be out of character with the road and will also affect the street scenes adversely. From a personal perspective, the last extension carried out by Mr Georgiou so a very high balcony area is still installed to the rear, which sits above the top of our fence and is surrounded by a wall of glass, which overlooks both our house and garden. This proposed third story extension would further infringe on our very limited privacy. I do hope that you will take these comments into consideration in coming to your decision about this application. I would also welcome you to visit my home so that you can assess for yourselves the impacts that this development would have on us should this application be successful. Thank you for your time, Wendy Fisher. Thank you. So another, uh, Leo Giorgio. Oh, thank you, Hello and thank you everyone. My family and I have lived in Stony Park for 11 years. We occupy the middle house out of the seven and are the youngest family. Houses rarely come up for sale on Stony Path and it's a privilege to live here. The residents remain for life and we know everyone on the road. The design we see today does not alter the front gable nor the height of the house at all. The roof remains in line and is the same as it is today. No two houses out of the seven along the lower part of Stony Path are the same apart from the front gables. The addition of a small front dormer is in keeping with the already existing lower two front dormers 
and in line with the once approved plans of my neighbours at number 15. The rear dormer will not be visible from the street as the design angles and closeness of the adjacent properties prevent this. The drawings clearly state obscured windows to the side dormer. If there wasn't, I would be looking directly onto number 19's flat roof. I cannot see their garden, front or back. There were no other windows. There is no loss of privacy resulting from the side dormer. The rear dormer will be set back, meaning there is less overlooking than from my first floor windows. Due to the fall of the hill at all angles, every house can see into every next door neighbour's garden if you was to extend your head out the window. The small Velux windows, these have been objected to and I'm more than happy to take those out. Structural concerns, this has been mentioned by others on every application that I've put in. Structural concerns can easily be overcome by an engineer's report. However, all seven houses are built on a one metre extended concrete float. I know this from the previous works that I did on the rear extension. We could have achieved the loft conversion under permitted development, which would have included a hip to gable on both sides above the original footprint. This would have been overpowering, I agree, and affect the street scene, I agree. We chose to go through the long and complicated planning process to provide a much better design and solution for all. However, this hasn't been appreciated by others. The loft is to allow our girls, my daughters, privacy and my disabled sisters to stay over on the ground floor. Demands grow, larger cars, driveways, electric charging points, trees, etc, etc. All these things have been adopted by the residents moving with the times. Yet my neighbour at number 19 resists change and objects to everything my family have tried to do to improve life. As a supporter of the Hills Society, I shared my plans with them thinking they were there to help and to access their extensive knowledge, but I was refused assistance. Their objections echo that of number 19. The two have close links. You would have thought both parties would have worked with me, their neighbour, to address those concerns. I've always had the full support of all my neighbours, except number 19, despite my meeting with them and presenting my plans on every occasion, trying to avoid any upset. We remain friends, despite the time and expense I've endured. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jennings. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, as you will know, I am the board councillor for Loughton St John's, where this application sits. Um, I've lived in the area for over 30 years and know Stony Path very well indeed. Um, I was visiting this afternoon, and basically I can... Uh, support, I think, everything uh, which has been said by the applicant. But it's always um, worrying and slightly saddening uh, when, as other members around this uh, chamber will know, uh, two neighbours aren't agreeing on the proposed development. It's understandable in many ways, and I think in this position, um, the gradient, the steepness of Stony Path does exacerbate the issues about um, adding, if you like, further building to the top of the house. But I'm heartened by the fact that most of the, if not all of the issues that have been raised um, in the last two applications, basically, have been taken on board for this third application, in as much as the, the, the roof has not been raised. The whole development is within that lower roof, if you like, and therefore the impact on, I think, the neighbouring property, specifically number 19, uh, which is the objector's uh, property, and on the street scene in, in, in full, um, is much reduced. I'm not particularly a fan of the, fa in the uh, additional uh, dormer on the front elevation. I would have preferred to have seen uh, a Velux window, which I think would have taken away or, or, or lessened the impact of more building on top. I think it would have just been uh, better to do that, but um, that's... that's that can't be helped now. So I think in general and on balance, um, I'll support this because I think every effort has been made to accommodate uh, others and take into effect um, and account uh, the, the views of others and of course our planners. So I'll be supporting it, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Corcoran. Uh, did I hear the applicant make a suggestion to remove something that was of concern? And can, can we, can, uh, what, what actually is that offer that's been made? Can we, can uh, Mr. Corley look at that? What, what, what is being, what are those windows? What's the issue? And does it help if they're no longer there? 
Yep, that's no problem. So, uh, from what I understand, um, from obviously what the applicants just said, uh, it is the uh, the Velux windows in uh, this. I don't know whether it's both, whether it's it's just the ones that are that directly face the neighbour, or if it, it, it is all four of these. But that they seem to be the the windows that are being referred to. Um, these, in, well, I mean, these are the only uh, Velux windows being proposed uh, in Venice. Um, personally, I'm I'm not convinced that they are particularly harmful. Um, I think, like Councillor Jennings, I'm, I'm not personally a, a big fan of the uh, the additional front um, front dormer, and I think a, a Velux window would, would, would be preferable there. But, but, but similarly, I don't think it's a, a reason for refusal, and I certainly personally don't really see too much of an issue uh, with the, the Velux windows, the small Velux windows located in these roof slopes here, but I believe that's what is being referred to. Yes. So are they are they then fixed and opaque, those windows? Um, I don't believe what well, let's have a look. What is it? I mean they I don't believe they would need to be in all in all honesty. I mean they uh, would actually serve this uh, first floor bedroom. Um, so they are going to be extremely high level. So even if we put on a condition, I mean, we can put on a condition uh, if we wanted to, to, to be on the safe side, um, but our standard condition obviously seeks for uh, the opaqueness up to 1.7 metres uh, when measured from the, the, the floor uh, of the, the room that they're in. And I would be very surprised if any of these windows were below 1.7 metres, um, because it, it, it certainly just appears that it's just to bring more light into this bedroom. Uh, I imagine that's why the applicant's happy to to, to, to remove those if if, if 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 required, because obviously it is just bringing light into a bedroom. It's not, they're not necessary. There is obviously a large front window already serving that bedroom, um, but it is just to kind of improve the light in there. But I can't imagine there would be any overlooking uh, as a result of those windows. Thank you. Councillor Sanga. Thank you, Chairman. Um, having windows in a pitch roof, if you were standing in a pitch roof, you can't really see much out other than fresh air you're going to have in the trees or something. So I don't reason, see why you have to have opaque windows. So I don't really have any problems. I think the windows should stand as it is in the application as well. Thank you. Councillor Wixley. Yeah, my, my question is also about windows. It's a general question, actually. So. Just, it refers in condition four. I think there's reference to a side window which will be of obscure glass and it won't be capable of being opened. But it's also, it seems to me, it's quite a high window. And I just wonder if the upper part of that window, I'm, and again I'm speaking in general terms, should actually uh, be allowed to be opened. Uh, not so anybody can look out and look at a neighbour's uh, property, but. Uh, you know, in this day and age of COVID, uh, the issue of air ventilation is quite important. And I just wonder if that's something perhaps the planning office ought to consider, not just in this application, but I think there's a later application which refers to a window that can't be opened. So I think if it doesn't impinge on uh, privacy, then there's no reason why the upper part of the window uh, shouldn't be opened. Uh, especially, as I say, because of the current situation with COVID and the reference to air flows. Yes. So, just I would I would just come back just to clarify that um, for Councillor Wixley, the the actual condition uh, is, is does ex, does does state exactly that. Um, it asks for it to be obscure glaze, but it says there's no part of those windows that are less than 1.7 metres above the internal floor air level of the room in which it's installed shall be capable of being opened. So, obviously, if uh, you know if part of that window is is higher than 1.7 metres, if it has a you know, a top opening roof light, for example, or, um, you know, a higher level part that um, that is, is higher than 1.7 metres, then there is no reason that couldn't be um, openable uh, as it wouldn't cause any uh, any loss of um, loss of privacy. It is only the sort of lower parts within that 1.7 metres um, that we are concerned about. So that is, that is covered by that condition, that standard condition. It's, it's, uh, Graham, can you clarify, is the, it, are we adding a condition to this application or not? Uh, no, there's, a, there's an existing, um, Councillor um, Wickley was just referring to uh, an existing condition, oh, right. or okay. uh, uh, one of the, the, the proposed conditions, and, it, and it, 
it's a specific condition that refers to the side dormer window, uh, which is the, the window that serves the, the stairwell. Fine, thank you. So, no more questions, we can go to, to the vote. Uh, yes? The um, vote is um, for the officer's recommendation to grant permission. Um, against. And abstentions. Uh, the vote is carried. Permission is granted. So that application has been agreed. Next application, EPF forward slash 2442 forward slash 21, 44, Barrington Green, Loughton, IG 10, 2BA. Thank you, Chairman. This application uh, seeks consent for an outbuilding to be erected to the rear of the garden at 44 Barrington Green. The application is before committee due to an objection from the town council and one neighbour. It is recommended for approval subject to conditions. The application site is an end of terrace property that backs onto a car park. Uh, it is this site here. The property benefits uh, from a small a garden shed situated in the rear corner of the site at present. Other large outbuildings can be seen or evident within the surrounding area. Uh, there's two particularly large ones just down here, but others can be can be viewed within the uh, locality. Uh, this just shows the uh, existing site. This shows the proposed outbuilding, uh, which, as you can see, would stretch the, uh, the width of the, the entire width of the garden. The proposal would be a, a fairly traditional pitched roof outbuilding, measuring 2.5 metres to the eaves and 3.5 metres to the ridge. It would serve as a store and home gym. Although fairly large in terms of footprint, it is not considered to be disproportionate. And whilst the proposal does need planning for consent due to the proximity to the boundary, uh, a similar size building without the pitched roof uh, could, be, um, could be erected on this site under permitted development. Given the location of the outbuilding to the very rear of the garden, it is not considered that this would cause any significant harm to neighbours. And as such, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Back to you, members. There is one speaker on this application, which is an objector, Caroline Humphreys, via Zoom. Caroline, you have three minutes. OK. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, Happy New Year. Um, my name is Caroline Humphreys. I live at number 42 Barrington Green, so next door um, with my partner, Tony. We would like to thank you for the opportunity to express our rejections as strongly as possible to the proposed shed or bungalow um, at number 44 Barrington Green. We are aware our time is limited, so we'll try to be as brief as possible. We fully agree with the Parish Council's objections and find the shed far too large and overdeveloped on such a small site, leaving very little garden space. It will be like a concrete jungle with a postage stamp um, garden, inadequate for present and future families, lacking local continuity, especially if you take into account the additional proposal of the four metre single storey rear extension and running consecutively EPF 244021. We do hope you are fully aware of this um, and the detrimental effects on the remaining garden space. Number 44 has also um, recently been granted a loft, um, loft extension as well, which we have no problem with that. Um, we feel the shed is simply absolutely enormous, a width of 8.2 metres by 4 metres. We've only recently been made aware of the true size. We did think it was slightly smaller. Um, we refer to the shed as the bungalow, 
Um, why it requires main water and drainage um, when there will be two bathrooms in the house a few metres away, if it's for a gym and for a, st a storeroom, um, we have to question. Um, we believe um, this will be open to potential abuse and misinterpretation, as an easily fitted macerator toilet can be fitted at a later date. If these water and drainage services are made available, there is the potential for a 24-7 occupancy. Um, we would agree to mains electricity, but no mains water or drainage of, it, of any form. We believe that 8.2 metre by 4 metre is simply just far too large a shed for this site. It's so tight up against to the fence boundaries that it appears to us it will actually replace um, pre-existing fencing adjacent to number 42, um, which is our house. Although the fence is number 44's property, it is derelict and incomplete and is also being blocked by their present wooden shed, causing similar access and repair issues. Um, we would happily accept the shed if it was half the proposed site, therefore four by two, and at the very least um, a 600 millimetre minimum gap between number 44 shed and the fence, um, so that the maintenance and repairs um, may be done from their property. Um, thank you for hearing our objections, and we do hope you'll give our concerns serious consideration. Thank you, Carolyn and Tony. Thank you. Members? Uh, Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not the ward member here, but I did speak to the ward member, or one of the ward members, um, who was not able to be here this, after, this evening. Um, and I spoke to him on this matter, and he didn't have a substantial objection to this shed. Um, so I would just say that um, I would like a condition put on it that it's not used as a separate dwelling at all and, and is not able to be used as a separate dwelling in the, in the future. Uh, he was concerned about the bulk, and other councillors may... Uh, want to take that up, but really I, I think that, personally speaking, um, that it should be all right. Thank you. Councillor Jennings. <laughs> the other one, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Jennings, well, um, sorry. Um, it's really in relation to condition number four. It says, and shall not be used for any primary residential accommodation. Does that mean you can sleep in it overnight? Overnight, I beg your pardon. Sleep in it overnight now and again? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, technically, that condition would, uh, yeah, probably would allow for it to be used as a, as a sort of granny annex style um, property. Obviously, we do have other conditions that we've used um, previously, where, which actually restricts it for any sleeping accommodation, uh, that is obviously something that we could we could amend that condition uh, if there are concerns uh, about about that. Um, if I may, Chairman, um, I can remember dealing with a very similar application in of Fence Peace Road in Chickle a few years ago, uh, and there was uh, again concern that this would be used uh, as ongoing accommodation. I'd like to see the same clause put in against this that it should not be used. Uh, for any overnight accommodation whatsoever. It's being put forward as a gym and it should stay as a gym or other leisure use but not be used for uh, sleeping overnight at any time whatsoever. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sanger. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Just really quickly to say uh, the reason this application is in front of us under planning considerations is the fact that the height of the, the, the roof is 3.5, the pitch roof, and if it was a flatted roof, it would be 2.5. 2 that will actually um, sell through under permitted development. I certainly know what I'd like to see out of my garden is a nice pitch roof rather than a flat roof. So I don't really have any problems with this application. I agree with Councillor Jennings, Mr. and Mrs. as well, <laughs> that those two consider those uh, conditions should be put on record. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brooks. <coughs> When I went round there today, it just reminded me, really, when you look at the other applications on this site, there is, I think, as the um, speaker has drawn our attention to, there is a tremendous uh, else amount of development on what's a tiny plot, actually. We aren't looking at a, a big sort of plot in Sparley's Hill. This is a tiny site, really. And um, I, I, I feel it's that we certainly must impose that condition on it. And I feel it is too big, even if we can only 
um, uh, you know, ask for this. Um, if you if you saw it, I think some of you. I know we looked at an aerial view, but it doesn't quite give you the extent to which a tiny plot is being what I think is overdeveloped. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Murray. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I, I would echo that view. I know this area very well. Uh, I used to represent it for 16 years. Uh, so I know the board, this part of the Broadway ward uh, very well. We all know that this kind of development uh, on a lesser scale would have been allowed on permitted development. We can all think of houses that have done that. I, I just question why you actually need something this size on that small plot when something quite adequate, quite similar to that could, would, could have been done under permitted development. So I think it's too big for, for the plot. Uh, number four is a condition that we must have but it's completely unenforceable. Uh, I can think of two locations in my own ward that are of similar size. All the residents that live there absolutely know that they're being used as primary separate uh, accommodation, but the district council trying to approve it is almost impossible. And three occasions we've attempted to approve it, and at the moment the council is still maintaining that they aren't being used as uh, separate uh, places of accommodation. Now, I'm not saying that that would happen here, but we just have to bear in mind that having the condition doesn't stop it from happening, and it's almost impossible, almost impossible to prove. Mm -hmm. But all Thank the existing residents uh, in the locations I'm talking about know exactly what's happening, and they see it daily, but you can't prove it. Thank but you. I just, I think the main argument is far too big for, for, for the plot. Thank you. Councillor Coulson. Uh, thank you. Didn't intend to speak on this one. Um, it's a material consideration for us tonight if we understand that there's another planning application in the system for a, a very large extension. So I'm surprised they haven't come forward together or we should, have, we should be able to see the implication of both. So I'm confused why we've got one followed by another because we probably wouldn't give both if they came before us. So I'm not sure whether this should be deferred, big deal, I don't know. But if it's a material consideration that should be brought to our attention, um, I'm generally not a fan of full width developments at the back of a garden because as the applicant says, how the hell do they maintain it without going onto neighbour's land? It should, there should be, it should give consideration to its neighbours, but I, I don't know if that's a planning ground. Um, I would like to see the implication of the other planning application before I make my decision on this one. Possibly not available uh, to happen, but that we should see both. So which, if, which one is that? I'm happy to come in here uh, if it helps. So uh, yeah, there is, a, there is an existing, uh, a, cu a current application uh, for a single, I think a single story Apologies. Uh, single story rear extension uh, and a front porch uh, um, that is mentioned in the in the report. I do have uh, I have a let me just share my screen here. Uh, so this is the uh, footprint uh, of the proposed uh, extension. Um, it isn't. It is. It is a current application. Yeah, it doesn't have a decision uh, at, the, at the moment. Um, it doesn't. Annoyingly, this this plan doesn't show the outbuild, and the outbuilding plan doesn't show the uh, the extension. Um, but they are two separate applications, uh, and there's no there's no guarantee. Even if we granted both, that they wouldn't necessarily build both. Um, but but uh, Councillor Kaufman's right. Uh, it, you know, it, it is a material consideration. We we, we should be considering. Uh, the fact that both could be built if both were approved. Um, I have done a quick measure, a uh, quick measurement, uh, and, and I believe that with, if both were approved and both were built out, I think there'd be about 88 uh, square meters of, of amenity space left in kind of this gap here, uh, not accounting for any side um, side bit of garden here, because generally that's not usable amenity space. But this chunk here uh, would be approximately 88 square meters 
So, uh, um, Councillor Vixen. Yeah, can I ask uh, Mr. Courtney? He's just said how much amenity space would be left. How does that comply with how much amenity space there should be? You do like asking complicated questions. Um, I'm not entirely certain the number of bedrooms on this. I would, I would guess that this is a, a free bed property. Um, but it would be a, it would be sure. a guess because of um, because the obviously the um, all the proposals are ground floor only so we don't have a, a first floor plan uh, available but but assuming it's a free bed property uh, then our adopted local plan our current local plan asks for 20 square meters per habitable room um, so we would be talking the three bedrooms and living area here so it would actually be 80 square meters. We only count the kitchen if it's over 13 square metres. So at the moment, we wouldn't count the kitchen, but certainly uh, with the proposed extension, which is a kitchen dining area, that would be larger than 13 square metres. So that would technically push it to uh, a requirement of 100 square metres. Um, so it would, it would then fall below that. Obviously, it is, it is, a, it is a guidance. Um, certainly in urban areas, uh, it is uh, less... Uh, of a requirement, although 100 square metres is sort of generally an accepted um, or acceptable area of, of a mansion space. So it is, it is below that. Um, the house has so, yeah. two bedrooms. Oh, the house has two bedrooms. Oh, apologies. Uh, in that case, <laughs> um, then it would only have a, a current requirement of 60 uh, square metres. And actually, with, um, yeah, with the single story extension, if it were approved, uh, then that would be 80 square metres, in which case it would it would actually still comply with those requirements. Any other speakers on this? Yeah. So can we... Co uh, Councillor Jennings. Sorry to come back very quickly. Um, I know it's not part of the planning thing, but I noticed that there is obviously a side uh, entrance to this property. Could, therefore, the building that we're actually considering tonight could be accessed from the road without going through the property. So, therefore, I'm thinking, hmm, could it also be used as a business? I know it's not part of the planning application, but I'm just slightly concerned by that as well. Thank you. Um, can I uh, clarify um, with the member, uh, Councillor Jennings, the condition that you stated earlier? on this application? You said... Sorry, well, the, the, the condition I asked that uh, it could not be used for residential purposes at any time whatsoever. Oh, I think, and yours, um, Mrs. Um, Jennings, uh, not used as a separate dwelling in future. So... Um, pardon? So, we could add to that or business or business separate dwelling in future dwelling or business in future um graham how how does that sound yeah that's perfectly perfectly possible again we have um certainly had uh, used similar conditions elsewhere where we have restricted that it cannot be any sort of separate use separate business um, separate residential dwelling uh, and we can add in any um any residential accommodation at all uh, yet that could easily be amended that that condition to cover all of uh, all of those uh, situations so that with that condition not used as a separate dwelling or business in the future uh, can we have a seconder on that uh, council sunday yeah. Yeah. okay um and with that uh condition um we could take this application to the vote um, <clears throat> the uh, officer's recommendation is to grant with the additional condition. All those for? And against? And abstentions? Um, the uh, uh, 
<coughs> the approval is granted. Sorry, the permission is granted. Granted. Sorry? It's granted. So, um, it's um, 12 4 4. 12 4 4 against, like 4, and 4 extensions. So that application has been agreed. Next application, EPF, forward slash 2531, forward slash 21, Hazel Cottage 67, Smarts Lane, Loughton, IG 10, 4BU. Thank you, Chairman. This application is for a single storey, full width ground floor extension with a modest part first floor extension above. It is four members due to an objection from the Town Council and both neighbouring residents. The application site is a mid terrace property within a row of three. There is an existing single storey rear addition that would be replaced by the proposal. This shows the front of the property, which would be unaltered, uh, and the existing rear, uh, and this is the existing extension that will be replaced. As can be seen, both attached neighbours benefit from two-storey rear additions uh, of a significant depth. The existing dwelling has a living room and kitchen on the ground floor and one double and one single bedroom along with a small bathroom on the first floor. The proposal would create a larger kitchen dining area to the rear on the ground floor and a new small bathroom on the first floor so that a single bedroom can be enlarged. The ground floor extension would measure 3.7 metres in depth which lines up with the neighbour's extensions. The first floor extension would be just two metres in depth and would be set in from each shared boundary by 0.7 metres and 1.5 metres. Whilst objections have been received by the neighbouring residents, it seems that they may have misinterpreted the plans since they refer to the first floor extending, uh, extended by four metres, which is incorrect. It would extend by two metres with the total additional um, internal floor area being just four metres. They also refer to the first floor being set against the shared boundary, whereby it is in fact set back from both shared boundaries. Given its modest size and position in relation to the shared boundaries, the proposal is considered to be acceptable in terms of both design and the impact on the neighbouring residents. As such, the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Back to you, members. Yep. Councillor Joggio. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, just one quick question and then a comment after. Um, the, the question around this misinterpretation of the dimensions by the neighbour at number 69, has that been clarified with the neighbour? Um, or does their objection still stand um, even with knowing the correct dimensions? Uh, well, we, we, we haven't gone back to the neighbour. We don't, we don't um, routinely uh, go back and, uh, and enter into discussions with the neighbours and there'd be no particular reason to, uh, to go back. I actually believe both neighbours did, did use a, a professional planning agent. Uh, so I'm quite surprised by the misinterpretation of the plans um, because, you know, the, the, it seems fairly obvious uh, what the, the proposal is. Uh, it seems very clear uh, that it is a, a very small first floor extension. It's certainly not four metres. Uh, in fact, the ground floor itself isn't four metres in depth um, and it, it's very clearly set away from the boundaries. Uh, I mean, their objections still stand in terms of their concern about loss of light, uh, visual impact, uh, etc. cetera. Um, but I, yeah, I do, I do feel that they they possibly have interpreted that it's going to have a, a, a more harmful effect than it, than it indeed would, um, but they are still valid planning objections. Yep, thank you. Um, so I, I think this is a moderate extension that just 
improves the functionality of the house, to be honest. Um, I'm mindful of the potential loss of lights or amenity, but I think it's overstated um, in this case, um, especially when you take into consideration the extensions, the first floor extensions of both the neighbouring properties. So I don't think we can use that as, a, as grounds for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Rixley. Yeah, if, if uh, Mr. Courtney could just go back to the, the drawings. Um, just got a question to ask about the first floor extension. Of course. Uh, yeah, this I, one. Yeah, I, I was just querying the um, the forty five degree angle that uh, we refer to in planning applications. That it's not infringed anyway on the. On no, the no, it's it? not. Um, I, I I thought I did see a plan. Uh, with that 45 degree angle uh, yeah. shown on it, but it's not not on these ones. But yeah, I mean, uh, if if you have a look, this is the the closest window, yeah. uh, and that certainly wouldn't uh, be be impacted by the 45 degrees. And, and same here, uh, there is this window that directly uh, faces uh, the application site, um, just yeah. here, which obviously would uh, be, be impacted technically, uh, although it's a, it's quite a distance. I'm not entirely certain what that window serves, uh, right. but it's pretty. In all honesty, it's pretty poor form having a window like that facing onto a, a neighbouring site. Um, yeah. So it's not it's not an ideal situation in itself. Um, but, but yeah, certainly it wouldn't. It, it, this wouldn't impact on the forty five degrees. Uh, and likewise with the other neighbour. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, same same here. So this would yeah. be the the closest window just here. Okay. Yeah. Thank thank you very much. No more questions. <clears throat> so. We could go to the vote on this application. Um, for the officer's recommendation to grant permission. Against. An abstention. So, thank you. So this application has been agreed. Next application, EPF, forward slash, slash 2556, forward slash 2114, Victoria Road, Buckhurst Hill, IG9 5ES. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this application is for a single story rear extension, a hip to gable roof addition a rear dormer and the widening of the crossover. The application is recommended for refusal due to the impact on the neighbour at 12 Victoria Road and due to its design. It is being presented to members since it has been called in by Councillor Patel. The application site is one of a pair of semi-detached dwellings that are almost identical in appearance. Neither of the pair of semis has been previously extended the detached neighbour at 16 Victoria Road has been extended in a manner similar to this proposal. This was done under permitted development and prior approval applications. The proposed rear extension would measure approximately 5.4 metres in depth. The existing dwelling is a four bed property uh, and to be honest is in need of modernisation. The proposed extensions would increase the dwelling to a five bed property with a larger kitchen family room. One of the main concerns with the proposal is the impact on number 12 Victoria Road, which already has a large extension beyond their rear wall at number 10 Victoria Road. The erection of a 5.4 metre deep, 3.8 metre high extension abutting this neighbour's boundary would enclose this neighbour and would harm the outlook of the neighbouring residents. This is considered to be the main difference between this proposal and what has been constructed at number 16. The existing dwelling is currently unextended, as previously mentioned, and is in need of modernisation. However, it does form a symmetrical pair of semi-detached properties with number 12. The proposed hip to gable extension the large dormer window, 
and the deep flat-roofed uh, rear addition would substantially alter the appearance of the dwelling and would unbalance this pair of houses. It is accepted that similar extensions could be added to the property, similar to those that were seen at number 16, although a rear extension to this depth would require prior approval and the choice of zinc cladding may not be permitted for the dormer. While such a fallback position is a material planning consideration, what is proposed here does require planning consent and is not considered to be acceptable for the reasons stated in the committee report. Therefore, even when taking account of the possible fallback position, the proposal is considered to be unacceptable and is therefore recommended for refusal. Back to you, members. Thank you. Uh, we have a speaker, Claire Denton, on this application. Um, good evening, uh, members. Um, firstly, I'd like to object quite strongly to this application um, uh, in regards to specifically uh, the light issue. Um, we, uh, we, we, based on where our windows are, I think on one of the pictures you had there, you, you can see it, our windows are actually lower than the proposed application um, for the actual extension. It's going to be higher in height than our actual living room window top of our living room window and that will cause us to have no light in our living room and effectively we'll be having to have a light on in the day every day during the day in full light having a, a normal a light on rather than having normal daylight and that can't be acceptable not for anyone um, and I would just like to say about the law on this point the right to light is, is acquired under the prescription act 1832 which provides the owner of a building with windows that have received natural daylight for 20 years or more to forbid any construction or other obstruction on adjacent land that would block the light so as to deprive him or her of, a, of adequate light through these windows. And that is the key point here. We are already hemmed in by number 10 next door with their extension. And if further development occurred to the right of us, it would create an enclosed development not only that, but we would effectively have no light in the living room, which again is our main room in our house, and this would cr create a loss of amenity to us. The depth of um, 5.4 metres and 3.8 metres in height are also considerable, especially as we are joined. So we are joined, remember, we're not separated here, we're, we're joined to, next to this house. And we would therefore be looking out onto a brick wall, which will go halfway down the garden. There is also the issue of a shared drain pipe between the houses at the back of the house. The applicant intends to build right up against the boundary wall, so not, not away from the boundary wall, but right up against the boundary wall, which would cause foundation issues, especially so since these houses date back to 1902. Number 16... Uh, has had a development done, but that is not adjoining number 14. That's the key point. They're not adjoining. We are next, right next to number 14. Therefore, the impact is not as great. Their extension is at least a couple of metres away. Um, the significant point is that um, also number 16 only got theirs agreed because they had permitted development. It didn't go through this process. That's the only reason, and that doesn't mean that's right. Um, in regards to the daylight report, the applicant did not carry out an internal light survey at number 12, only at number 14. This, therefore, in my opinion, is null and void. As the light issue arises in number 12, it's not number 14, it's number 12. We are the ones that are affected because we haven't got an extension, um, and that's the problem here. For, furthermore, in Mr Maguire's questions, he also mentioned this in his report. We also, I would also just say about the dormer that we don't, we don't approve of the dormer either because of the height of the roof, the anomaly in the height of the roof. Um, in summary, we would therefore ask you to consider these points and take this into account in regards to the overbearing nature and the loss of immunity in regarding light and privacy. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have John Newman, the applicant in person on Zoom. Oh, you're here? Oh, you're right, okay. Why does it say Zoom?
Thank you. Uh, good evening and Happy New Year to you all. Uh, we're uh, a family of five, myself, my wife and our three children. Uh, we currently live in Buggers Hill and have lived locally all of our lives. A year ago, we viewed 14 Victoria Road after many years of searching for a period of property. On entering the house, it had a wonderful feel, despite being unoccupied for many years, being in a terrible state of disrepair, and we decided if prepared to spend time and money, it could become a family home for life. We agreed the purchase and proceeded to apply for planning to extend the house to fit with a modern day lifestyle which would cater for our family needs. This application was subsequently refused and although disappointed, we began to work on solutions to the points raised. We've spoken to all of the neighbours from number eight to number 18 and all but one are very supportive of our plans as they feel it would greatly enhance the street scene and the road. Following the objection from number 12, We've spoken on a few occasions and attempted to work to a solution. Unfortunately, we cannot agree on a way forward as they feel no changes should be made as they don't want to ever extend their own home. Taking this into account, we changed our proposal on this application, attempting to provide some common ground. This included removing a window from the front, reducing the size of the rear extension by one metre and dealing with other points raised in that report. The main objection from number 12 is the potential loss of light if any rear extension is built, any rear extension. As this was raised, we instructed a professional independent daylight sunlight survey to see what effect, if any, would be on our neighbours. Modelling was completed on the original six metre single rear extension for a worst case scenario. The result being, and I quote, no noticeable loss of light to any window at number 12. Following a site survey by the case officer, I was concerned that he did not now understand the data and invited him to discuss this directly with the surveyors before coming to any decision. No contact was ever made despite chasing and the decision to use a rule of thumb which ignores modelling and data produced from a professional survey I have huge concerns with. This, this survey was paid for and the facts have been ignored and feel this is an unfair reflection on any application. I've also provided a response from the surveyor, which has been very difficult due to tight timescales, as he was furious at the points raised by the case officer. This provides clear evidence that this scheme meets every guideline, and I would urge you to consider his professional opinion rather than the rule of thumb. Also, our neighbour at number 16 has quoted with an almost identical house as recently extended under plan, uh, permitted development six metres to the rear, used roof space in the same way as our application, and also follows rear extensions at 8, 10 and 18. Permitted development would allow a single storey rear extension and a substantial increase in our roof space. This is shown from revised drawings provided. We believe this application should be approved because it would make a beautiful family home that we could enjoy for many years whilst ensuring that a house that's not currently habitable would be restored to its original condition and further enhancing the street and the area. I urge you to look at the professional points made. Uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Ten more seconds. Oh. Uh, I'll only add one more point, um, is that uh, there were further uh, submissions only today because the case officers have been unable to accept those and they should be looked at. Light, a professional light survey, should be taken into account. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, of course. Uh, we have a question from uh, Councillor Patel. Chairman, not a question, but um, I, I, I called this application in. Um, and I'll explain my yes. reasons and rationale for doing so. I understand that, obviously, um, it's unfortunate when two neighbours are at dispute when it comes to planning applications. However, uh, it's important that we consider the merits of the application when, when determining it. The, um, I was contacted by the, uh, by the applicant um, after the planning officer uh, visited the site um, and raised, raised some concern ab about the application. And the applicant was um, unclear as to why there was um, concern around the application when the neighbouring property had already got a similar size application. So essentially the reason for calling this in is to clear any ambiguity around 
around the site, um, around the uh, around the reasons for, for for refusal on on the site um, and the rationale behind that. I visit, as I said, I've, I've visited the site, um, and the property is a beautiful property, um, but, but in massive need of uh, refurbishment uh, and modernisation. Um, when you consider the property um, on its street scene, um, there are there are three semi-detached properties um, in, in a row, and then there's a, a separate property, and then another pair of uh, semi-detached properties. Um, essentially, the what's being proposed here is um, is very similar to what's already been granted planning permission at number 16, and essentially, although. Uh, that was the majority of that application was granted permission under prior approval and permitted development rights. It does set a precedent to this to this uh, application. I think the main the, the the main point of contention here is the is is the um, the impact on on daylight um, and uh, loss of amenity for the um, for the neighbour at number twelve. <laughs> I didn't know. I only had three minutes to speak. <laughs> I think um, <laughs> obviously there's a there's a rule of thumb that that's used as a guidance on uh, on determining the impact um, on on uh, on one dwelling compared to another. But if we if this extension had uh, permitted had exercised its permitted development rights, they would have been allowed to have extended out to two three meters. Now, the window uh, in question where the, where where the line of sight is being taken from is a short distance from the boundary edge. So using that rule of thumb, um, an extension of one and a half metres would, ha would be pro probably the maximum where um, you could go without having an impact on that window. But under permitted development rights, you can go right out to three metres. So the point around the, 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 the loss of uh, amenity due to daylight would be overcome under permitted development rights in any case. Also, the um, the hip to gable uh, conversion would also be um, tackled, or, or or would be approved under permitted development rights as well. So, the, the, you know, there's, there's two key key points there, which would, if if the applicant had exercised their rights uh, under prior approval of permit development, they would have overcome uh, those reasons for refusal. Um, in terms of the um, in terms of the symmetry of the property, um, the, the neighbour has has also got a hip to gable um, conversion as well. So again, it, it, it does marry into into this extension, and there are numerous examples around um, Buckerstill and 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 the district which have hip to gables on semi-detached properties. Um, just in closing, obviously. A couple of the points that were raised as the reasons for refusal previously could have been overcome by way of a um, by way of planning condition. Um, I'm just trying to find my notes. One of the points around the the, um, the metal cladding uh, to one of the dormers, um, sorry, metallic cladding uh, again can be overcome by a fire condition, um, which, which can be imposed asking that materials are clarified uh, to the planning office prior to approval. Um, and the, the, other, uh, the, the other point that could be clarified, sorry, the other, the, other, um, uh, the other thing that can be, clar um, can be conditioned is the, um, is, is the rear window at, on the first floor, which again, um, there's a comment made about the overlooking uh, onto, no onto the property at number 16. Um, however, number 16 hasn't objected to the application. Um, However, notwithstanding that, we could impose a condition whereby there is a, certainly a partial obscure glazing to reduce the impact uh, of looking down on, onto that property. Just final point, Chairman, because I know um, uh, we'll move on, but in terms of the rear extension, uh, the, garden, the garden does um, raise its level as you, as you go back, um, as, as you go um, towards, um, as you go back into the garden. It's a very long garden, um, and so the extension that's being proposed would cut into the ground, and so the extent of the extension would be reduced to the neighbouring property, in my opinion, 
because both land levels do rise um, in, in, in both gardens. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Williamson. Uh, thank you, Chair. As, as one of the other ward councillors, um, I find this one really uh, conflicting. Um, um, the, there is no doubt that the house needs re refurbishment, um, but that has nothing to do, I think, with this planning application. Um, the previous refusals, we, with the, the, the current application has gone part way to answering some of those problems. I think the precedent of number 16 is troubling because uh, the precedent of 16 is as if 12 were developing um, the, the extension on their side. This is the adjoining building, as the objector mentioned, whereas 16 uh, does have a boundary and a... And a, a, a um, a, a space between 16 and 14. There is absolutely no doubt that number 12 will have a tunnelling effect. They've had a huge extension at number 10, they're looking at another one at number 14. Um, I, I, my, my rule of thumb, I'm, I'm a child of surveyor, but my rule of thumb is there is no doubt there will be loss of light to that window, as has been pointed out. Um, even if it was under permitted development, there will be loss of light. I'm conflicted because of the permitted development problem here that if we say no to this, then uh, it's a pretty slam dunk three metre extension on the back of the house anyway. Um, it's, a, it's a very difficult one to balance. Um, I can understand where the officers are coming from and I can understand where the applicant and the objector are coming from, so I'm really conflicted on where to go with this application. Councillor Neville. Thank you very much. Yes, I too am conflicted on this one. Um, I, I can, as, as Councillor Williamson has said, uh, I can see very much where number 12 is coming from. I can very much see that, but I also can see where the applicant is coming from in, in trying to extend their house and that they've done a light survey, uh, which the, uh, one of our officers disagrees with. Uh, and says it hasn't been taken number 12's uh, uh, most prominent window in this case to into fully into account. Um, I would also like to uh, mention that if we do end up granting permission down the line, that uh, a condition for uh, biodiversity enhancement is included because this was actually one of the reasons for refusal of a previous application of the in, in adequate provision for the retention of trees which I believe have now been removed so you're going from much lower base with no trees on there but I would like to see that included but yes it is a finely balanced application and I will listen with great interest to what others have to say. Thank you. Ch Chairman, sorry, before we go to any other councillors, is it okay if I just come in and just, I, I feel I might need to clarify something uh, before we get too far into any further discussions. Um, the officer recommendation, or the officer's report, uh, does raise some concerns um, about the daylight and uh, sunlight survey that's been submitted. Um, it, it does um, raise some, some, some issues with that, but, but actually the recommended reason for refusal isn't on loss of light. It is about the, the impact, the, uh, the impact on the outlook and the visual impact. Um, on the previous application, uh, the previous refusal, uh, the, 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 the reason was on loss of light and visual impact, but actually on balance, given that, they, that, that there has been a professional sunlight daylight um, survey done, uh, and as much as we do have some doubts, and clearly there are, uh, concerns from the neighbours um, still about uh, the the loss of light. As officers, we haven't recommended that as a reason for refusal. Uh, it is purely on the visual impact. Uh, I just felt that it was important to, to stress that point because uh, I don't want uh, members to be under the misapprehension that that is the, the reason for refusal. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Simon. S sorry. Sorry, yeah. Councillor Barlow. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, 
um, number 16, is that attached also to number 18? Or is that yes, a, so, okay. yeah, so number 16 uh, is a semi-detached with, uh, property with number 18. The, the situation is, is, is fairly similar. The, uh, they are slightly different appearance, particularly at the front, but, uh, but at the rear, the, uh, the appearance of the, 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 the two pairs of semi-detached houses so are fairly similar. Did number 18 have any issues with light? Because of the no, so the, the is it that different. Apologies. Um, no, so the as I say, the, the extensions permitted at number sixteen were uh, the roof extensions were um, agreed under a lawful development certificate, so it didn't require any form of planning permission, uh, and the uh, single-storey rear extension was approved under prior approval. The only reason it was approved is because there was no objections to that, um, so there was no objection from number 18 and no objection from number 14. Uh, obviously, a, if an extension as proposed at uh, 5.3 metres or, or, or up to 6 metres uh, was submitted for number 14, we would have to go through a similar process and we would write to the neighbours. I strongly suspect we would have an objection from number 12, in which case an officer would assess the, the application uh, and consider the impact on the neighbours. There was no opportunity to ex uh, assess the impact of the neighbours from the, the extension number 16, purely because there was no objections and therefore they, we don't have the opportunity to do that. And that, again, is one of the big differences, I think, between this proposal, which requires planning permission, and what's been built next door. Yeah, the reason I asked, I didn't know if anybody from number 18 had actually mentioned that they have loss of light, you know, as a, as a result of, of that extension, number 16. Uh, I certainly haven't had any, any complaints, uh, received any complaints from, from, from number 18. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Heath. He doesn't want to go. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, so as I said, I was at uh, the Parish Council meeting when we discussed this, and we did discuss this uh, at length. And uh, we're completely aware that there will be an impact on the neighbour, and uh, sympathy is there. But I think what we should stress at this point is that, uh, similarly to the house in Stony Path, this is a family trying to build a house that they're going to make a big commitment to the area in. And this house, occasionally I've coveted it, it's quite a nice looking house. This house needs improvement, it needs a family in it, and I think we should just uh, acknowledge that under permitted development they could do an awful lot that will impact on the neighbour and cause distress, and apologies for that. Um, but I think we should approve this because it is a serious commitment from a family to live in the area. Thank you. Councillor Saunders. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wasn't going to speak on this, but um, somebody that's actually going through uh, a neighbour of mine who's trying to build his house and he's exceeded the 45, well, 45 is, is loss of light. I understand where you're coming from, but we have a situation where this a precedent that's been set. However, we, we're determined the application as we see in front of us um, under permitted development. Um, in future, um, you know, if if we sort of refuse this application, you won't be able, if, if you wanted to extend it as well, there'd be an issue there as well. I'm on the fence on this one. But yeah, okay, certainly taking everything into consideration. Councillor Coffey. Could you humour me? Can I see the plan again, please? Uh, uh, um, Mr. Courtney. Uh, of course. Uh, which which plan? This is a so uh, the extension. Floor plans. The extension element. Would you like to see the the plan of the, the plan of the single stop? That's it. Okay. And is yeah. it full width? Um, yeah, it's full, well, it's full width of the property. Yeah. Um, there yeah. is obviously a a um, an access mm -hmm. between number yeah. fourteen and number sixteen. So it, it's not the full width of the site, but it's the full width okay. of the property. Yes. So call me an old cynic. I, I don't fall for the um, the point about it's a family and we must help the family. We've got to deal with planning grounds. We've given consent in Buckhurst Hill recently to a family, supposedly, and immediately got the planning. They sold it. It's nonsense. We've got to deal with the reality. Um, if you look at the house to the south, can't read the numbers. My eyesight's too bad. Number eight. They were. They've got inset extensions. That's how the old, in the old days you did it. You respected the neighbour and you kept away from the, the boundary wall, and that way, it's not absolutely in the face of the of the person who's next door. It would. You know, it's, it's a respectful request. Is there any way this could have been set in so it's not right on the boundary, which would then kill the. Um, the greenery because they've got foundations that go straight down 
all the trees go on the boundary, we go into concrete city. So it would be lovely if it could be set in, and then we wouldn't have, I would suggest, so many objections. Um, so I don't want to be harsh about it, but I think it does have a material effect. We've got this bloody permitted development thing against us all the time. Mm. But this is a lovely house. The owner is a respectful man. He's going to cherish this house, but he's got to be careful that he doesn't ruin his own house by what he's proposing to do. So I, I'm not for this because of the impact on the neighbour, if that's sufficient planning grounds. I think it should be inset from the boundary, if possible. Um, Councillor uh, Jennings. Um, yeah, just to follow up what Councillor Kaufman has said, it's just sort of sprung something in my mind. If these were detached properties, planners, I'm sure, Mr Courtney will uh, confirm this, uh, would be asking to, for any development to be at least one metre from that boundary. And yet, when we've got two semi-detached properties, uh, they're allowed to go straight up. Now, there's, mm. that's not, in my mind, uh, quite right. I think we've got to find a, a solution to this because we've got one man's dream versus one woman's nightmare. And it's, it's not very funny if you're in the, the position that Mrs Denton, is it? I, I beg your pardon, uh, is in because your property is being ruined through no fault of your own, by somebody else's action. And with no dis uh, disrespect to you, sir, but you can see that there is a, a really sort of awkward problem here. Somebody's going to end up very, very unhappy. So I think what Councillor Kaufman has said, that we need some sort of compromise, and I think the idea of pushing it back at least a metre um, against the joint boundary might be one way forward. Thank you. Any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Patel, did you want to come back? Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I just wanted to come back on the point that Councillor Kaufman has made um, regarding um, separation from uh, neighbouring property, because the party wall between number eight and number ten is has been ex have both been extended. The separation gap um, between the neighbour at number ten and number twelve um, is not obviously not not up to the boundary edge, but there is the natural house separation between them. So. The, the, the point that you've, uh, I don't necessarily disagree with you on, uh, um, on points, but it's different in this, in this setting because this is the party wall that, that we're looking at here. It's not the separation between, uh, between the properties. It's a, sh you. it's a shared wall. Right, so we can um, go to the vote on this application, please, Laura. Um, <coughs> so, um, for the officer's recommendation to refuse permission. Against. And abstain. Um, the vote is for uh, the officer's recommendation to refuse. To refuse. Well, we want a member must make a proposal to refuse the application. Sorry? Yes. The officer's recommendation okay. was to refuse, and the, um, the voting was. Nine for that recommendation. So three can, against. can I ask for a way forward? I think Councillor Kaufman has made the way forward for all of us actually, in not only this application but in many others. Yeah. I don't want. I, I, I would suggest as a way forward that the extension should go ahead, but it should not be right on the boundary line. So we redesigned. So this application has been refused and um, thank you all very much. Application number EPF forward stroke two, triple seven forward stroke 21, 83 Ticehurst Hill, Laotian, IG 10, 1BZ. Thank you, Chairman. 
The uh, last application for tonight uh, is for various extensions to the front side and rear uh, of the property, including raising the roof and adding dormers uh, to 83 Ticehurst Hill. The application also proposes a new wall and entrance gates, an enlarged patio and an open air swimming pool. The application is before committee due to an objection from the town council and one neighbour. It is recommended for approval, subject to conditions. The application site is a large detached house within Tysurst Hill, which is, as you probably all know, characterised by large detached houses. Given the sloping nature of Tysurst Hill, the site sits on lower ground to number 85, uh, but higher ground to number 81. Many of the surrounding properties have been extended and enlarged, as can be seen here. The existing property, although large, is actually more modest uh, than many of the surrounding houses uh, in this locality. This shows the uh, rear of the existing dwelling uh, and uh, in particular shows the, the slope of the land. So this proposal is um, a revised scheme following a recent refusal for a larger, bulkier extension, the outline of which can be seen here. The previous application also proposed a large rear balcony that was considered harmful to neighbouring amenities and lacked information regarding the impact of uh, existing trees. The proposal would significantly enlarge the footprint of the house. Uh, it would also enlarge the, sorry, uh, enlarge the carriage driveway, introduce uh, a 1.8 metre higher gates and railings, and would increase the rear patio. Whilst the uh, majority of this patio would join uh, the boundary of number 85, which is on higher land, there would be some additional patio adjacent to number 81. Uh, which is estimated to be approximately 950 millimetres higher than the neighbour's land level. Uh, this just shows the uh, existing property uh, as present. So the proposed extensions would increase the ridge height of the uh, property by one metre. However, the dwelling would still um, be lower than number 85. Uh, and therefore would retain the staggered building line of the street. Uh, the design and reduced bulk of the proposal now is now considered to be acceptable and in keeping with the character of the area. The front boundary treatment, which I'm not sure how clear it is uh, there, but, um, but the front boundary treatment is similar to others within the area, including a recent approval in 2021 at number 87, Tysurst Hill. The removal of the rear balcony has overcome the previous concerns regarding overlooking and, is not and it is not considered that there would be any other detrimental impact on neighbouring amenities. So sufficient tree information has been submitted with this application to overcome any concerns of the tree and landscape officer who are no longer objecting, objecting to, the, to the proposal. As such, this proposal, this revised proposal, is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Back to you, members. Um, we have a speaker, Paul Waterburn, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, good evening, and I'll, I'll try and get this as quick as possible, knowing I'm the last one. Um, so, Tysus Hill um, is made up of houses of different size. Uh, designs and character uh, and the parish council objected to our application stating overdevelopment that would result in a negative impact to the street scene but as mentioned in the uh, planning officer's report the proposed extension would actually still be quite modest compared to our neighbours properties um, a really good example of this would be number 72 who are directly opposite us and are, are currently in the middle of their extension um, they recently won an appeal that was pre previously refused um, and they're actually a, a larger house and it's actually a larger extension. Um, 
Our revised plans do show a fully hipped roof, which reduces the roof bulk and is similar to many other properties on the same side of Tysus Hill as to ours. Um, it's worth stating that our house is in serious need of modernisation, both internally and externally. To give some examples, we're unable to drink the water because we still have lead pipes. Um, we have a very old gas boiler that's going to be condemned uh, and includes an asbestos flume. Bathrooms, kitchen and double glazing are all in excess of 30 years old. Um, the committee did say that it would be willing to waive this objection if the roof was lower and we removed the railings and the walled gates. Um, but it's worth noting that the actual uh, roof height um, is actually following the street scene and the natural gradient of the road. And the increase in the height of the roof is actually 0 0.9 metres only and we are still well below number 85. Um, regarding the objection on the railings, um, there are many properties on both sides, especially on our side of the road, that do have walled gates and railings. Um, to give you some examples, number 73, 75, 77, 87, 91, 93, 99, 103, 105. So we do think it would be in keeping with the current road and the position in the road that we are. Um, we note that the planning officer was happy with the, the redesign of the hip roof and it's recognised as an improvement on the previous plans. Uh, and in relation to the objection from our neighbour's daughter at number 85, um, just a few things to note. So they have a north-facing garden, so they do have slightly reduced light anyway. Um, and we do think that we've been sympathetic in the design of the house with the hip roof to, to, to bring more light in there. Um, we've also got quite a lot of distance between our house and theirs. Um, it's 3.9 metres, so there's quite a lot of space. We're not close or, on, or near their property. Uh, we've been very considerate in regards to the 45 degree angle of light. Um, so if we had gone out to that extent, the extension would be significantly bigger than what it is uh, at the moment. Uh, and we are unable to move the double extension to the other side of the property because we would um, hit that 45 degree angle of light, so it's not, it's not something we're able to do. Um, we removed the balcony on the original plans as requested, um, and the front extension, though it was, there was no objections, we've reduced the size of that as well. Um, so just a few final points. Um, we are currently the smallest house in our surrounding houses right now. Um, there are no objections from the tree officer, the drainage or the highways team, and overall we've generally tried to address the concerns that were, were raised originally in the previous application, and we do think that we've been sympathetic to our neighbours in the design of the house. Um, and, and the last point I'd like to make, if okay, is I, I took plans to our neighbours just to try and say, look, this is what we're doing. Uh, and, and at number 70, were directly opposite us. Uh, his comment was, was quite interesting. He said, it's about time. So for me, that sort of summarised our, our wishes and desires. Thank you. Thank you. Members. Uh, Councillor Jennings. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, Tysus Till is no doubt uh, a road that is um, <laughs> see, famous for its huge extensions. Uh, and I know that sort of many, many houses there have had absolutely enormous extensions, and I do appreciate that. Um, I see that out of the three uh, reasons for refusal, two have been addressed, which is very good. Um, I wasn't quite clear about the plans for the front boundary because we don't seem to have... Well, I'd just like clarification on the height of the wall and then the height of the railings on top and then the sort of joint height. Um, can we have some clarification on that, please, before I go on? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I believe the um, maximum height of the boundary treatment is 1.8 metres. Uh, I'm just going to have a look because... Unfortunately, the plan, well, the plan I've got is the same as the plan of you, you've got, and it's, uh, it's very, very small uh, on my screen here. So if I just pull it up on my other screen, I should be able to zoom in and um, see if I can see what the, 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 the heights are. Uh, if you hang on two seconds. So... I say it's a little bit difficult because the uh, obviously the, the, the slope in the land um, affects the, the height, but the maximum height is 1.8 metres. Uh, which actually, what I'm going to show, which may be useful, is a is my my screen with the with the zoomed in. So as you can see, the the very maximum height here is 1.8 metres, and obviously it then steps down. Um, 
to follow and then this gate here would also be 1.8 meters um, I, we, I don't have the measurement um, I can measure it out but it just purely based on um, oh apologies this is not showing Try that again. I've just had a message saying it's not shown on the screen. Let me try that once again. Is that is that now showing? Can you see that? No. Oh, that's strange. Had no problems so far tonight. I don't think. Um, all right. Let me. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. One point eight meters um, is the is the maximum height. Uh, as I say, it steps down. Uh, whilst I haven't got a, an exact measurement, it looks like the proportion is slightly more brick wall to railings. Um, so I would hazard a guess it's, again, it varies because of the, the, the topography of the site, but um, it looks like it, it is, at its largest point, it would be sort of a metre um, or slightly over a metre brick wall um, to sort of 700-ish uh, railings. Um, but as I say, it does vary as it kind of goes up the hill. It, it, it sort of evens out a bit, so it's it's um, it's kind of even water um, railing yes. ratio. I'm just um, concerned about the enclosing effect. If it's if the wall is, I mean, at one point eight is quite high, and it would be very enclosed if it wasn't for the fact there were railings you can see through them. But how high is the brick wall then? You know, what does it say? It, is it going to give an enclosed effect or or is it just going to be more open effect because it'll just be mostly the railing and not the wall? It's what does it say? I mean the, the, the gates the gates are all railings. Uh, obviously the pillars are all wall. Um, the I would say the majority of the wall is is around 50 uh, 50 uh, in terms of the ratio of wall to railings, but there are points where there is more wall to railing. Uh, let me just, if you hang on two seconds, I can give you an actual measurement. Uh, let's have a look. So I'm going to measure the highest point of the brick wall. It is, oh, it is, it is, it is showing as approximately a metre. Um, so actually... The highest, the highest, the highest point of the wall that I can measure on here seems to be just under a metre. It's about right. 95 um, to, to 76 railings above. Um, but as I say, it's as you kind of move up the hill, it becomes more. Uh, it becomes sort of 70, 76 to 76 kind of more, more, uh, more proportioned. So it's it's, it's around a metre, uh, which I don't need to tell you is. Is a permitted development wall anyway? If they chose to, to build a just a wall, um, so I, I feel it is it is fairly open uh, and it is similar to Good. others yes. in the area. Now, as I say, he's um, the applicant has addressed the two two of the reasons, but the first reason I feel is quite a strong um, reason for refusal because um, the if you look at the the plans from the front the roof presents a very bulky part of the development. The rest of the house looks pleasant and well-designed, but the roof still appears, especially at the side, looking at it from the front, it still appears to be very bulky. So for that reason, I'm not, not so happy about the design of the house. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, is it? Council Court, um, Councillor Kaufman. Um, I wasn't really proposing to speak, other than can I just see the, the front elevation again that Councillor Jennings has referred to, please? Hopefully, this is working. <laughs> um, so, this is the, well, these are, these are all the elevations, or we have, uh, oh, apologies, wrong way. Uh, we have that one, which is the street scene elevation. We can't see it, uh, Graham. Oh, you can't see oh, no. it? <coughs> no, it's... Um... This is very unusual. Um, yeah, look, this was working previously. <coughs> it does say that you shared the screen. 
but it's uh, it's not showing blank. up. I honestly don't know why that is, being that it's been working perfectly fine all evening. Well, I hope it's been working perfectly fine all evening. I'm, I'm assuming that you've been seeing my presentations to date. Um, Yeah, no, that's unfortunately. I don't know why that's not now sharing, Can you and I'm not sure how to fix that. What about starting the presentation? Well, that's that's what I've got up. I've still got the presentation up. Um, oh, I see. It's already. So I don't know why it's not. Let me. I will try closing it down and restarting it. This technology works brilliantly until it doesn't. Well, I think we, I don't think something is, the technology is broken down. Uh, Councillor Kaufman, do you want to continue? Um, I, I, just try I, one more time. Sorry, just, has that, has that now showing up? Or are you still getting, no. No, apologies. Um, luckily, this happened on the last item and not the first Sorry. item. Or we could have been in real trouble. If we make you the host... Graham, it yeah, may be sure. easier to share. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that now. <laughs> okay, thanks. Graham, you are the co host anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that's still not sharing. No. So, okay. Councillor Kaufman. I, I don't have major objections to this one. It's the absolute maximum that one can consider to give for the plot. Um, and I respect what Councillor Jennings is saying. I don't think it's sufficient grounds not to approve it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Murray. Yeah, Chairman, uh, I'm going to divide my remarks into two. Uh, I'm very conscious that I'm sitting here as a councillor that's neutral and makes decisions on planning grounds. So I will be voting for this because there aren't on my reading of the agenda and here in the office there are any grounds to object on planning. But I think it's awful. If you ask me personally, I think it's horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Thank you. I, I haven't quite finished yet, Madam Chairman. I just want to make two other points and I haven't spoken very much tonight. I've lived in Loughton for 63 years. I used to enjoy walking up Alton Hill, down Lees Hill and up Tyshurst Hill, and they are just horrendous. And all I can say is I'm really pleased I live the other side of the railway line. <laughs> OK, thank you so much. Now, um, I don't think we have any more queries. Oh, Councillor Lyon. Just, just a quick one, Chairman. Um, on the boundary wall, is there sufficient space for the gates, or where the gates are, for a car to be off the, the highway completely? Um, and yes. That, that's uh, so that there's nothing sticking out if you're turning into a, a gated property. Uh, that's a good question, uh, which I can have a look at. Uh, they certainly don't seem to be set back. They seem to be... The gates do seem to be on the front boundary, um, so it depends on what the distance is from the road. From from my memory of Tyson Steel, it doesn't have uh, unusually large pavements, um, so, it, so it, it probably is less than the uh, six metre setback um, that we prefer. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know the exact the exact measurement. Um, I can, I can, I can have a look though. Bear, bear with. If you, I'll come back to you on this one. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Sunder. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Murray, I, I'm totally convinced, is anti gates and and huge mansions. I, I truly believe that you've made those same comments about a lovely turning we got in Chigwell. This application is a lovely. <laughs> Lovely application, and I think um, all the houses in Loughton are, are beautiful with large, large gates because I've got them outside my house as well. I should be supporting this application. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now we have Councillor Wixley. 
please. Well, j j just for the record, my gate's falling off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's actually been like that for several years. But uh, uh, to get onto a serious point, uh, uh, my biggest concern is for the neighbour at number 85, uh, because he, uh, reading this, he, he objects very strongly. I just want to, uh, Mr Courtney, to um, perhaps give uh, some comments on how valid uh, that objection is, and is, is the neighbour being overly concerned? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'd want to say overly concerned. Uh, obviously, that's their property, and uh, it's obviously a, uh, a much more emotive uh, issue for, for them than it, than it would be for, for ourselves. Um, so I want to suggest that they've been overly concerned. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, number 85 is the, um, is the property, obviously, that's set higher than um, this application. Um, so they are on higher, higher ground. Um, so I think the impact on them is less than, uh, than the potential impact on, say, the other side, number 81, uh, where obviously it's on, it, it sits on lower ground. Um, there is, again, I think the applicant mentioned there's a quite significant distance uh, between the, 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 the houses uh, here uh, because number 85 is set back from the, the boundary um, so more than this application site is. Um, certainly the officer's, um, certainly the officer's opinion uh, is that it won't cause, uh, oh sorry, and there's also the sort of staggering, they're sort of slightly further back uh, than, the, than the application site. And certainly officers don't feel that there would be any detrimental impact, obviously the, the neighbour does, uh, and I wouldn't want to suggest that they're wrong in saying that, um, that is certainly their opinion. but. Uh, but yeah, the officer's professional assessment is that, it, that, that the impact wouldn't um, be significant enough to warrant refusal. Uh, but obviously members may choose to disagree with that. Fine. So I think we could go to the vote on this application. Please, Laura. Um, Chairman, on, on the consideration of the setback for the gates, can we put a condition in should that not be sufficient? Apologies, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, my apologies, I did, I did, I did look at that. Um, so it is, uh, it is only, uh, only just over two metres, so it's, it's 2.15 metres set back from the edge of the highway. Um, so it is not a significant amount, uh, unless you're driving a smart car. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, you can come back just briefly. Uh, just to say that obviously it's, it, Titus Hill, the part we live is actually really quite wide and all, the, all of the other houses on the same side of the road to us, their gates are on the front just as we are proposing and so it's, it would feel harsh if, if we couldn't have the same, but I do understand your point. Okay. Councillor Lyon. Are you, um, do you yeah, we're considering on? this on its merits as an individual case. So I think, you know, if, if it isn't set back sufficiently, uh, I think we should ask for it. But that, uh, that uh, I think we need to take Mr Courtney's view on where we are with this. It is, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it is slightly difficult because obviously we do have a plan showing where those gates are proposed. Um, and obviously those are what are, what are in front of us and those are what we're assessing. Uh, we have previously added conditions that state notwithstanding um, details shown or something like that. So it, is, it isn't beyond the realms of uh, a possibility to, to put on a condition. Obviously we do have sort of conditions that we quite often put on just stating that no gate shall be erected within, uh, I think if I remember rightly, that the, it's six metres from the edge of the highway. Um, so that's a fairly standard condition we put on, but obviously it's slightly difficult here because we do have a plan, but we could theoretically put a condition on if this is the only issue um, that states, notwithstanding the detail shown, no gates shall be within six metres and, I don't know, maybe uh, seeking details of that as part of a condition. Um, I mean, largely I don't think it's going to affect the visual side of things, uh, having those gates set slightly further back 
um, and there's a more than sufficient um, front garden area that I don't think it's going to affect the usability of the space. Um, so it is, it is, I think, in this instance, something that we could consider adding as a condition. Um, Councillor Hugh. Uh, we don't need this condition. This is not a hugely busy road. It's quite wide at this point. There's absolutely no need to add this in at all. It's not like it's Buckersfield High Road where it would be a problem. Let it go. Thank you. Go to the vote, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> go to the vote. Um, this is for the officer's recommendation, which is to grant permission. For. Against? And abstentions? So that application has been agreed. And on that note, I'd like to thank everyone very, very much for all their input. And I wish you a fond good night and a good journey home. Safe journey home, everybody. Thank you.